Esports break all boundaries. They're played by men and women across cultures and can be played on consoles, PCs, and even mobile devices. Esports are truly a world sport. Over the last decade, we've seen interest, broadcasting, and live events eclipse those of their traditional sport counterparts. Esports are a massive draw. We love to watch them live, and we love to watch them stream. For people under 30, video games are the most popular media industry in the world, more popular than television, music, or movies. But competitive video game play is not just something we do, it's something we watch. In 2016, more people watched the League of Legends championships than the World Series, the NBA championships, or the Stanley Cup playoffs. That makes the top three sporting events in the world the World Cup, the Super Bowl, and a video game competition. Esports are the sport of the rising generation. Talented players, broadcasters, and managers are filling every level from professional, now to collegiate, high school, and even peewee. To many, esports is the biggest world they've never heard of. But to millennials, it's the future of competition, of broadcasting, and of sport. But not the distant future, the future of today. This is esports. And that's esports. And now we're getting ready for the first heat of the finals. Right. Now, this is the Actually, big the final. finals. Yeah, this the finals. is the finals. Well, but the first race of the finals, very, yeah. very good point. This is the final CVR World Cup Paris. And it's a series of races. Not what you saw before, maybe even not what you saw an hour ago. This is something completely different. CVR has changed some fabulous things. And we're going to find out just exactly what this CVR really is. Cyclogen's Virtual Rankings is a ranking system for Zwift racers built to make racing more fun for all levels of ability. The rankings are based on historical data as well as new race results which are uploaded immediately. Racers are divided into divisions and points are distributed based on the strength of the field in the race. Terms are separated into months, quarters, years, and lifetime. And at the end of each term, racers are able to be promoted to a new division. High-scoring elite racers are also automatically under consideration to participate in a CVR World Cup event. So many new and exciting features have been added to the event today as well. Chris, you know, right now you can see the women warming up for today's race right there. They're right in front of us. We can hear their, their breathing. They're so close, <laughs> right? And the, some of these racers certainly we know even better uh, than others. So yesterday we had those preliminary races that would determine who would advance to this collection of finals. And that was described, what well, we describe them now, as performance and elite. So the top four riders from each of those races and the two fastest riders from those two races um, were named to the elite group. Those who didn't, named to the performance. And the performance race was everything we hoped it would be earlier today. Yeah, I mean, all these riders, regardless of their final race, are competing for a growing prize pool. You can add to that prize pool by cheering and watching at CycleView on Cyclogent ranking site. Yes. Check it out. I mean, you can add to this, you can cheer, you can add a yep. dollar, five dollars, fifteen dollars, whatever you want. And here's what happens. What you do is you, you decide you're going to cheer. You, um, you pitch in a buck and it actually raises the prize pool, which has been steadily going up over uh, the weekend. It's really exciting stuff to see. And, and what what we want you to do is jump in and just cheer for one of these riders. Who, who are you going to cheer for? Ioni? Maybe it's Marion? Maybe it's Siri? How about Beth or Taya? Those are names that you know really well. Jump in and cheer. But also on this site, you can do some other things. And this is kind of where CVR has kind of pushed the limit here. We see the telemetry. We can see exactly what the gaps are, how hard they're working, something. How many watts they're putting out? Yes, exactly. Especially relative to the way you get that watts per kilo. We'll look for that big definition of how that really matters here from you in a minute. But you're going to be able to see all of those things. And you can watch any of the riders that you want. You can select the riders to stay focused on. You can connect with us here and follow what's happening in the commentary. Lots of different opportunities. It is, it is a game changer and it's been really, really cool. Okay, so as we get ready to go here, let's take a look at the course because this is a really challenging one. 
we're going to kick off with a hill climb. Now, what's amazing is that the first part of this climb, or stage rather, is pancake flat. No one's going to get dropped on this. But in the a big, you know, kind of opening stage, the climb to the castle as it's called, we've got about 5 or 8.9 kilometers, right? 5.53 miles with a max grade of 11.1%. That is a 4K, when you finally get to it, of not gradual climbing, but painful climbing, right? A total of 725 feet in that space, 221 meters. And it ends right on the line of the cobble up there. You get up to the castle, and then that is it. Well, that's only the first stage, right? Winner gets points. What yeah. happens next? You know, then we're going to do two laps of the Hillier Verse course. You may know it. You may have done it multiple times. It's 18.4K, maximum grade 11% again. Oof. You know, it's going to be a tough course. It's rolling. There's downhill. There's uphills. There's turns. There's all kinds of excitement that happens in there. And that's going to be perfect for an all-arounder athlete, an no all-arounder cyclist to maybe be looking to, to and win we've that got some of those in the group, the final stage that we're coming up to, and by the way, the sprint finish on hill, and two, the hilly reverse is unreal, but um, that is really cool. And we do have some riders that are perfectly set up for that opportunity, but we're going to see the sprinters at play as we have in every other race on the three volcano laps clockwise. 14.6K total, almost pancake flat. When you see the profile here in just a second, you're going to notice that it gives you uh, you know, a little bit of bump, but that's 14 meters total per lap. It is pancake flat, in my opinion. And as you see the, the profile here, you see that as well. You dip into the caldera twice. You drop down to uh, the, the sea level, as it were, just a little bit. You're going to see what OSHA would never approve <laughs> as a race course, which, of course, is all of that uh, It could lava. be hot. It, it could be hot. Definitely. Okay, so let's give you a quick rider roundup of who we're going to see today. And we want to spend as much time talking about these girls uh, as possible. We've had just a little bit of a change up here. In position one, we've got Beth York. That's right, the very one who was sitting on the desk with me uh, here from the U.S. Who do we have next? Hey, we've got Ione Johnson next, and she is a really strong cyclist. Australian rider, 19 years old. Then we've got Marion Sacco. She is from France, 25-year-old rider, really well-known. We'll talk about her judo experience probably a little <laughs> bit later. All right, hopefully she's not going to throw any elbows here. No kidding. All right, we got Siri Hildon. She's from Norway. She has been the uh, a Criterium champion oh. three years in a row, so look for her in the Criterium. That's right, stage three for sure. And we've got uh, Irina Asola. Very nice to have her, in, sorry, Harriet Dodd in the group uh, from the United Kingdom. Also another young rider, not a lot of experience, say, in a race like this, but on the mountain bike course, she can crush it. Very cool. All right, now we've got Irina Osola from the United States. She's a UCI pro. Yes, she, she is. She is one of the favorites in That's here. Right. She's, she's, been she's racing. here for the cash money, yo. She's been racing all year long in the UCI circuit. And Esther uh, Measles right here uh, from the United States as well, 22. She crushed her feet. Uh, you know, group yesterday. Oh, Look for her to do some amazing things. Amazing performance. And we've got Rachel Elliott. This might be the guaranteed favorite. You yep, know, I mean, for sure. she really threw down yesterday. The last Incredible. two riders, Taya Freestead from Brazil here, has been doing great stuff. And our final rider, Inga Jansen, she also, the, the Netherlands rider, a great. Now, this is where it all happens. We're going to jump down to the course in just a second. We're 20 seconds away from the start. When the gate drops here, it'll be very interesting to see if they do the standard scramble and kind of kick things off. I'm looking forward to you, the coach, up close and personal with these riders telling us what's going on. We're going to get unprecedented access, and the gate is ready to drop. Let's see what happens now. And here we go. They spin up, and they drop the gate and go. We're on board now with one of these riders, Hildenen, and we see Beth York, her camera view. She knows what she's got to do. This is the moment where she's got to get in the group here. Ione Johnson drifts off the front. She backs off a little bit. You'll start to notice these types of things happening in the group right now. We've got the up in the corner. Look in that left-hand corner. You've noticed that some very savvy riders have picked up a hint from some of these others. Others, maybe not. Harriet Dodd, a relatively newcomer to this. Now, she's listening to her music, kind of focused in on what's going on. You'll notice she does not have a power-up. Well, why do some people have power-ups, but Harriet Dodd does not? Because they did a warm-up which allowed them to travel under those banners to pick up 
that. Now, you'll notice quite a few of them have the feather. We won't tell you which ones do, but we do know that that is probably the most valuable piece. Nothing is going to happen here in the opening roughly 4.5K of this as we move toward the base of that mountain. They're going to all kind of stay in that group. There's no real benefit to be gained here by going hard. And so what are you advising your athletes? They're going to have a higher elevated heart rate. Um, they're going to be maybe spinning and doing a little bit more work than they would in this kind of classic warm-up. But how do you stay focused and not blow up your engine this early? Absolutely. No, I mean, in some of those riders, their heart rate was already at 172. I mean, they are putting out some power. And really, that's not the time to do it because they're no. going to hit this climb and it's going to go even higher. So, I mean, ultimately, this is a place where they just need to kind of ride along and get to the base of the climb and then use their power there. Now, you can see that some of them, they want to keep the pressure on so that those other riders are on the limit at the bottom of the climb because if they're at the limit at the bottom of the climb, it's going to only be harder. But, oh my gosh, it's it's uh, this is a tough one here. You know, we see that, uh, that quintessential well-known lean by Rachel Elliott as she kind of leans into her effort here. She is a time trialist, pure and simple. And in the previous races, she has always been in a position to use that power against her competitor. She just drops it, gets a gap, and people flat give up. She releases the Kraken and there's nothing that she can do about it. Or there's nothing that they can they do can about do it. Exactly. That's right, that oh. gap grows big. Taya Freestead, notice the shaved head, very exciting. She's wearing that ODZ kit. We've got some teams at play here. We see the PTZ riders, three of them in this case, drilling there. One of those, Taya's friend, Beth York, making sure that she's trolling during the front. Now, it's very interesting, the possibility of some team tactics in this, and I think that we're gonna see them. Right now, we've got everybody together. They're really just gonna sit together at this point. This is not where the action happens. But what will be interesting is you definitely have some climber types in here, as well as some less likely climber types. Uh, we won't call them something <laughs> else, right? The all domestics. Rounders and sprinters. All rounders and sprinters, right? Well, well, hold on, we can't say all arounders. <laughs> that implies something different. We're not saying round. Anyway, let's dodge They're good this at stuff. everything. They're good at everything. There Unlike go. my mother would you uh, say, which is, <laughs> you're good at other things, honey. <laughs> now, we've got Esther right there. She is focused and making sure she's connected. This is all Looking part of that pretty kind of relaxed there. really relaxed and and so what's the breathing like what if you're thinking about the lamas of cycling <laughs> here what things are you focused on to keep your heart well, rate as down as low as you can that's a great thing because they need to be in a rhythm right they're they're telling their body stay in rhythm they don't want to get in that panting place where they're out of breathing mm -hmm. breathing rhythm because that's too much so they're just trying to keep their arms relaxed they're trying to keep their elbows relaxed they're trying to keep their chest open to bring in as much air as they can to have that rhythm so their heart rate stays low to save it for this climb and it's coming soon it is coming really soon they're right now they're underwater and they're getting ready to uh, make this big turn they'll come out onto what the 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 fans call Jarvis Island the reason they call it Jarvis Island is this big tree in front of you and we won't pass under it but we're gonna see it the big tree with the hole in the middle was on Jarvis Island which was the first location uh, for the Zwift uh, virtual world the first virtual location now so this Jarvis Island this little island here is a junction between multiple tubes under the ocean you know just like you would find in real life uh, this virtual world can break it one of the cool things about virtual worlds is they, really good ones, have a sense of worldness. A little bit of pickup here. They're starting to line out. When you see that geometry in a group of cyclists like this, that means that they're working pretty hard, doesn't it? Absolutely, you know, and, and one rider is pressing the pace in the front and all the rest of the riders are sitting in. There is a draft in this. There is a virtual draft, and so they're saving energy. The rider in the front is using more, just like they're out riding on the road, and that's something that you can take advantage of, especially riders who've spent enough time in Zwift. They know how to take advantage of that draft. And some of these riders haven't spent a lot of time here, so there's, there may be a little disadvantage for those. So coach, tell us a little bit, you see some differences in pedaling style here. Um, as they come up this hill, no one wants to get dropped, so there's gonna be probably just a little bit of panic so that they stay together. This is not the time to attack. You really can't get any benefit moving from this onto the flat uh, because you know the group can pull you back. The group has much more aerodynamic advantage. We see Kim Little in the background there watching these riders. He's, he's over the uh, shoulder of Esther Measles there and trying to get uh, up in the group. She wants to make sure she's right there. We're looking over her shoulder, her avatar. She's wearing that kind of maroonish and, uh, and orange uh, kit there. Very kind of uh, Virginia Tech if you're gonna kind of throw that out. 
and uh, she's just going to stay in that group. But um, you see the different pedaling style, Coach, right? You've, you've got people out of the saddle, in the saddle, you know, different kind of cadence structures here. Why would somebody early on in a race like this, when you're warming up, why would you get out of the saddle? Doesn't that, doesn't that diminish your ability to do things later? What's, what's the philosophy? Well, certainly it might because out of the saddle takes more energy. It, uh, it makes your upper body use more oxygen and your heart rate's gonna go up as a result of that. So in this period right here, we need to, you know, I would say, I would recommend as, as a coach, hey, stay in the saddle, keep your cadence up 100, RPM, 90 RPM, whatever is what we call your self-selected cadence. Your yeah. self-selected cadence is the cadence that you feel best at. So here we come, here we're getting no closer. No kidding. As we travel under the dead dinosaur here, those would be the uh, bones across the road there. We kick it up and the, the ride starts proper here. This is a big digger right here, but you're going to come up and over and you're going to see the bridge and it's going to give you a little bit, but really not much reprieve there. Taya on the, uh, on the rivet there, making sure she stays connected here. Taya also getting a cheer right on the Cyclogen site there, right? The Cycle View site, a dollar from her competitor in the regular Saturday women's race, Tara Wright from Canada. It's good to see the competitors cheering one another on right here. But we're going to start to see them line out a little bit more. Rachel Elliott has said, I'm ready to go. Who is on the front? No Look at her already. Kidding. Already, she is on the front. We hit the bottom of that hill and she took off. I mean, look at her face. She is already suffering no I mean, kidding what kind of video game is this what a <laughs> terrible idea and look if you look at her overall power she did some kind of very specific warm-up early on she's got that selected where she can see or it just sticks around where you can see the amount of effort she's putting out that's an awful lot of red what does that red mean and that is heart rate and her heart rate is pinned to the top right now did you see the watch she's putting out 350 330 350 watts no I kidding. mean holy cow I and mean, she's back to off Incredible. just a hair, but she's got 12 seconds on the rest of the field. Now, they may be gearing up. They may say, you know what? I want a good race here. Irina in that group. Esther, uh, Ioni in that group. They may want something different than uh, the other folks in front of them here. They may let Rachel have this moment. She's the, definitely the power horse. She's going to climb super fast. Um, and they may just want to hang on, but that's a 14 second gap now from Rachel to that chase group. Uh, Marion says, I actually want to get off the front a little bit, but those girls, Harriet included, do not let her do so. Dodd really on the tail right there. The uh, British rider right on the tail of Marion, the French rider. Very cool to see. As we look at Harriet, uh, she's digging also kind of drilling around the front there. Uh, Marion Sako right there on the front as just described. She comes onto the bridge proper. It eases just a little. When we see a bridge, we normally think flat. This is not a flat bridge. This was created by Beelzebub. It is a terrible, <laughs> uncomfortable uh, bridge. And as we established before, you see the markers on the side. The markers indicate where I have been dropped on group rides <laughs> on this. Now, you it's look at their feet spot. and you see the cadence spinning around there. Their computers are Alienware Alphas, which we're going to give away here in a little while, right on the floor there. Taya Freestead making sure she is connected to what's going on here. And, and she is nearby. She slipped a little bit. She's chasing Siri down. But this may not be the, the performance she's looking for here, but she's got to save things for some other you know, times, doesn't Absolutely, she? Absolutely, because, you know, if you give too much right now, you've got two more stages. We've got the road race and the criterium to come. You know, they're still close. You can see there's a nice group right here. They're still pretty close. It's not going to be the end of the world if they're just a little bit behind. But at the same time, it's also that carrot dangling in front of them that they're trying to they know that they can catch up. But, you know, is it makes sense to catch up. It's much better sometimes to be in the group, save a little bit of energy, let the others pace at the front. So. It's a tough call right now. No kidding. We're starting to settle in. Now, the interesting is Marion is not really dipping back further. Rachel um, doing her work at the front of this, making sure that she gets the result that she wants. And it's the power that we would expect from her. But there's still a lot to be determined in this. Many more cheers coming out. Oliver for Rachel Elliott saying, great job. Uh, Lee Harvey also cheering on the cycle, uh, site for... Uh, Gavin Arbor from earlier today. Uh, Drew, I'm going to guess this is for, I oh, Ione Johnson. I thought it was going to be for Taya. Uh, but I'm sure that'll come up. And of course, my favorite, um, my favorite uh, lyricist and, uh, <laughs> and poet, uh, Anonymous, Anonymous. Uh, gives a little money Very to, popular to Jess, today. Uh, yeah, to, to York as well, and Christina Willis. So we're going to send Coach down there right now so we can find out what's going on, maybe offer a mic up to some of these ladies. Maybe they won't like to receive it, but we'd love to get 
just your sense of what's happening in this, whether people are making strategic decisions or whether they're just getting flat dropped. All right, well, I'll see you in a few seconds in okay. a few minutes. I'll get some feed from feedback from them, see if I can talk to them a little bit and, and uh, just get the feeling of what's happening. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, awesome. We just concluded the men's race and it was unbelievable. It was so, so cool. Ian Bibby coming out with the win here earlier today. We had a different kind of thing with, uh, with our friend um, Carrie Conabare actually taking all three of the women's performance bracket. But this is the women's elite. This is the top of the top of the top. And we are seeing clear separation. Now, these, uh, this is a tough place to start. We know that from, from what we've seen before. We've got Rachel, Marion, Harriet, uh, Irina, and Ione right there at the top. If you don't know those names, you might know Elliot, Sako, uh, Maisels, uh, Osola, uh, Dodd, right? Those are the folks at the front of this race. Now there is a little battle shaping up here between Beth and Terry, excuse me, Beth and Taya. Siri right in between them. Less than uh, 15 seconds divide Beth and Taya. Um, who have ridden together and raced together many times. They're smart, they're savvy, they've raced many times. They may be hanging on just a little bit, a little bit longer. We're gonna jump down to Coach there who's in position to tell us just a little bit more what's going on on the course. Hey, I'm down here with Harriet and she is really giving her, her effort here. Esther, you know, and uh, she's with a group. I don't want to spend too much time because she's got to stay focused, but her, her heart rate right now, Chris, is 191. Her wattage, she's putting out 230 watts. So she is really, really digging in. We got only two kilometers to go. All right, Esther, you can do it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's about all we can get. We'll go and, and grab somebody else here, but it's getting close to the finish and she's right there. We see Coach behind, uh, everything happening behind here on the, uh, on the track of the National Velodrome. The uh, Olympics, uh, you know, really kind of kicked into gear. It's not until 2024 here in Paris, but we're excited. And this venue is likely going to play a big part in what's going on. So Esther in that group hanging on. She definitely is the third rider, but they have detached Ione. She's three seconds back. Not happening for her. The gap is actually falling for Rachel Elliott. Marion Sako, the French writer, says that you're not going to just take this from me. Now, you see on her face, Rachel, who did a hard race yesterday, big solo effort yesterday, is now kicking it into gear a little bit more. But if Marion can just stay steady, take a little bit more out of her, that once 17 second gap has dropped down to 10 seconds now. The French writer trying to catch on to her, Rachel trying to hold on to her piece as well. Now you'll notice that she's wiping the sweat from her eyes. She knows how to do this. She is pure time trial all the time. This is her kind of race. She looks up, she's got that, that lean to the right going on your screen. That would be the lean to the left, just trying to milk as much blood from the stone as you possibly can. She's got to do it. Coach has got to be pleased in a situation like this and doing as much as she can to stay off the front. Marion, however, is not allowing her to do it. As we look in on Marion Sako, we see that this gap is no longer a huge gap. They're climbing up a hill, but you can completely see Rachel Elliott in that group. Oh, she, not in a group at all. She's chasing all by herself. They're getting closer and closer and closer to the, to the climb here, and she's chipping away. You know, eight seconds now, Rachel dipping into the red, but she's not getting very deep. Boy, she's kind of wearing out a little bit. This may be a little too much too late. The question is Marion Sako with her comeback ability yesterday. Can she draw back a little bit of that distance? She's in a position now with almost 54 seconds on the next group. She's definitely going to get 16 points. But Marion says, I don't want 16 points. I want 20. And she's going to have to take that right out of the back pocket of Rachel Elliott, who is on the front. But if she is not putting out consistent power like she was before, she doesn't like it when she hears me say it either. She knows how far she's got to go, and then she's dipping it into that 300 watt zone. Her heart rate elevated, not expecting to see her at this high. We saw her kind of max out yesterday at about 182, 184 beats. She's kicked up above that. We've seen 88, 89. She's got to back it off just a pair, but she can see the castle there. This is the time for Marion to empty her tanks if she's got any chance to catch her, and she still may. She's not very far behind. She can see her target on the road. Will she be able to dig in and do it or will she be satisfied with where she's at?
that. It's going to take 400 watts or more. Her heart rate rising. You can see those legs spinning fast, over 100 cadence. That means she's putting everything she can into it, pedaling as fast as she can. But it looks like Rachel is going to crest over and see those cobbles before anyone else. She's going to come across first, and that is going to happen right here. Rachel is going to take the first stage despite being pulled back by Marion Sacco, the French rider, bringing it back to about seven, eight seconds. Marion will cross under any second, and then we've got the big group. In about 15 to 20 seconds, Coach, what are you seeing before this next big group sprints? You know what, I'll keep it here for just a minute. We'll give it to you in just a second. Harriet is on the front of this group. Esther tries to take it away from her. We've got three riders right there. Harriet finding herself being passed. She's got a little bug on her wheel. Don't let her pass you. Blow her off your wheel. You need almost a tailpipe or one of those breakfast burritos. Ooh, big dig coming around. Ioni really digging into the red there. Gonna come, you know what? Harriet wants to be able to hang on to her. They're passing somebody else on this. We'll see who that is in just a second. Looks like it might be Irene the American rider and now there's some big gaps happening right there there's some excitement in the velodrome a little bit of everywhere we see that big gap Ioni on the front and Ioni is about to come across he's cheering her on Esther is probably going to come in behind her Ioni gets two seconds on this group but there may still be a push by Harriet will she do it it doesn't look like it but there can't be more than a half a second separating Esther and Harriet with Irina just backing it off just a little bit. She wants to finish strong, get a good time. But now, next to vomit, we've got Ioni. And right next to that vomiting position, we've got our coach. Uh, I'm going to stick a microphone in her face and ask her how she feels. All right, here we are with Ioni. Ioni, that was a huge effort. How are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> her heart rate is still 175. So that's about all you can get out when your heart rate's 175. What a big, big push there at the end. You know, she she was really digging deep and and big numbers. So, I you got to recover here for the next one. Are you gonna be all right? Yeah, I think so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Keep hydrated. These athletes, they got to hydrate. They've got to eat food. They've got to nu give nutrition gels, bananas, whatever it is, because they've got time. This is not just a 15 minute race. This is gonna go for an hour and a half. So they need to keep their energy levels up. It's gonna be a tough one, Chris. Going on here right now. So as, as our remaining riders finish this up, the, uh, the pieces are in place right now. We know where we're at. Rachel Elliott with the big finish. She pulls away, but she doesn't get away without a chase. Marion Sacco comes in second, grabs 16 points uh, to Rachel's 20. Ioni Johnson comes in third place, grabs 13 points, and secures a great spot for her in this race. And we're excited to see what she's going to come up with for the rest of the race as well. Um, then we've got Esther Maisels um, from the U.S. with 11 points rounding out that top four. At nine, Harriet Dodd, Irina with seven, Beth York with six. That's good points. You want to hang on to those. That's going to help change the money that you get in this case. Also, you've got uh, Siri uh, Hildenen, um, who falls back a little bit further than I think a lot of folks thought she would. The Norwegian rider, Taya Freestead, with not her best climb. She's going to look to uh, redeem herself a little bit later. Inga Jansen rounds out that top field. Still gets a point, still has the potential to do stuff. Now, this pays out pretty well. We're going to come up in just a few minutes to this second group, and I'm hoping we can get just a little bit. I would love to know from Coach. We've got a couple of these riders just in the mix here. Uh, Harriet is a relatively new to this. This may have taken some things out of her, but I'm, I want to know really if she's got some more strength left. Coach can find that out for her, but also to find out how some of these other riders feel. Beth York, who's been on the desk with me all day today, finishes high in the field. Irina gets away from her just a little bit, but she manages to hold off Siri, which is really important. Taya and, and Inga rounding out that top group. But as we look kind of to the middle of the field, number five, we've got Harriet, the relative newcomer. We'd love to know more uh, about Harriet Dodd. That's you, Coach. All right. I am with Beth, and Beth has been on the desk with you, Chris, all day long, calling, making the call. How does she have the energy for the race now? Beth, how are you doing? Oh, I'm feeling it. A lot of fatigue, not necessarily from riding, but from just the, the grind of, of uh, 
It's a lot of work talking in front of people, <laughs> even though I have the gift for gab. Uh, some long days, but you know, it's nice to come in here and sort of decompress actually and, and disconnect from that because I missed a number of rides this week. So I was like, ah, so right. I'm getting my wiggles out. All right, getting rid of some of that stress, you know. All right, that's that's it. That's it. Well. Well, what's your strategy for this next race? Um, hang on. <laughs> I'll see what I've got. I was surprised that uh, both uh, in the race yesterday, Taya and uh, Siri were dropping me on those climbs. And, uh, you know, my, I knew I wasn't going to be at the front of a hill climb. Um, so kind of right in the middle is kind of what I hope for. Um, but then again, those ladies are strong ladies, so their strategy might have been to hang on to some of the other stuff. So lots of fun. Who knows what's going to happen? I just have to do my best race. All right. Good luck. We're glad you're racing. Go for it. All right. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Coach. Coach Hunter Allen down there on the course with our own Beth, and she was flat heroic on this. We're getting close to the next race. That was stage one, and here's how it stacks out again. Rachel Elliott in first place with 20, Marion Sacco with 16, uh, Ione Johnson uh, from Australia in third. We have an international podium at this point, but we are not done by any stretch. This is going to be another race. Now, hilly, uh, excuse me, hilly reverse and it's gonna come straight out of the gates and we're gonna get a little bit of an undulating climb. You could really get yourself in trouble in this case. They're gonna have to watch Rachel Elliott. They cannot let her have the day here. Somebody is gonna have to steal a stage from her despite how strong she looks. Now, what we would expect to uh, see is riders start to take bigger risks and you can do that with a three race uh, event like this where you've got three different stages and that is something that we hope to see. That's the excitement that's potential. We saw that in the previous race we saw that in the previous race with uh, Quentin LeFay. We saw that in that. Now, a couple things that you want to know about these other pieces. Um, we, got, we noticed that uh, when they get to the second stage, a different group of riders uh, comes to the front. So Coach is going to tell us just a little bit more. He's then next to Anton, right next to him. Let's find out what's going on. We just have a few minutes left before we go to the second stage. And I'm here with Anton. Anton is going to talk, a, speak a little bit in French to our French rider and tell us. And she's going to speak a little bit in French and tell us about how the, her race went. Avec Marion, Marion Sico, deuxième de cette première étape. Ça va pour l'instant, Marion. Pas trop d'efforts. Il y a encore les deux étapes là qui vont qui vont se suivre dans quelques instants. Ça va pour l'instant. Oui, bah, c'était quand même assez éprouvant. Donc euh, après, bon, euh, moi, je fais du cyclisme sur route, donc euh, je pense que j'ai de l'endurance, donc ça, ça va peut-être me favoriser pour les deux prochaines manches. Allez, bon courage, Marion, moins d'une minute avant le départ de la deuxième étape. On reviendra tout à l'heure. Marion qui a terminé deuxième de la première étape, c'était il y a quelques instants. All right, there you have it. Well, back to you. We're almost ready to straight race. Go for it. Excellent. And for those of you who took middle school French, you know exactly what she said. Middle school French is an important one. Okay, so we're getting ready to drop into the pen for this race. 30 seconds to start. This is where it's going to get exciting. I think, as we've seen in other races, the, the race is now, ah, and it's raining. It's raining in the virtual world for this hilly road reverse. Very exciting to see as we come into this section. Now, when the gate drops here in just a second, only 17 seconds away at this point, we're probably going to see what we've seen many times before, that surge. But the great thing about an event like this is that once that initial panic of not getting left behind uh, subsides, we, we see a different kind of just calm and more strategic. And that's what we like. And the gate drops. Lots of cheering in the room here. They all get rolling. No one left on the live. Uh, and we've got Rachel Elliott really digging, but she's not on the front of this race. See if she can find. Now, she's always been very successful with that one hour power, but the way I see it, she's worked up about 22 minutes of that one hour power. Let's see what she's capable of doing. She may not be able to handle it as long as she has in the past and some of the more strategic work. See, Rachel likes the front. She doesn't want to be strategic. That's her strategy. She just drills it on the front and she moves around. She breaks the will of those around her. Uh, she's a necromancer in many ways. Um, we'll explain what that is a little bit later. Um, but she is just as evil on that push as you could possibly be. She just drills it on the front and makes everyone else around her suffer. Esther making sure that she's in that group. And we've got this nice collection of riders. Now, they don't want to be dropped on this. They want to be able to stick around because this is not the challenging section. It comes a little bit later, doesn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, you know, and that's the difference here. Rachel is, is 
perfect, like you said, in this steady state effort right at FTP, being able to sustain a really high number for a long period of time. But the question is, can she handle being in a Peloton of riders where there's this surges, this on and off nature, with, which may not be to her strength. When riders attack and then they go and they recover and they attack and go again, that's going to be what we need to see. Can she handle that? Yes, and she sees and comes around again. These surges are all, she digs hard here. She did this in London too. This was her spot. Man, it's early. She wants to get away and ride her race and not have to dictate or be dictated to by other riders and they would be smart to get on her wheel. In fact, there's somebody looking around saying, if I can just catch her coattails, I can ride all the way to the finish and get all the points that I want. This is the strategic move. These riders are not going to want to let her get away. It's too early. Coming right over the top, we've got uh, Marion Sako and she puts a little bit into her, trying to get a little bit of a gap. Rachel responds a hair. Rachel has to drop a power up, specifically her draft boost, right, so that she doesn't get lost behind. That is something we would not expect to see. That means that she is human, allegedly. <laughs> we can't prove that for sure, but we think that there is a good chance. We'll see if, if you uh, nick her arm, if you see <laughs> motor oil and, uh, and and other types of you know pneumatic Robotics. fluids. <laughs> exactly. Is she a robot inside? Is she a fembot? What is what is going on with Rachel Elliott? We think that she might be well, human, and Marion proves it. And here you go. Here's exactly what I was talking about. She just tried to ride away from them all, and she couldn't, right? They came That's back right. up to her, and now she's going to have to deal with this on and off nature of cycling, right? Just what's going to happen when somebody else attacks? Yes. Is she going to be able to go with them? And then somebody else might attack on top of them. That, m that might be her Achilles heel here. It might be, in fact. And we see Rachel Elliott on the front again, Marion in that yellow, uh, bright jersey, wanting to come around. Her, but there are others in this field who want to come around her as well. We've got Ione, we've got Irina, Harriet, Siri in this group, and of course Marion Sacco, the French rider. We've seen a little bit of a gap unhinged in the trailer. We see Beth, Taya, Esther, and Inga. How are they going to catch back on? Oh man, it is going to be tough because they've lost the draft and so they've got to work together. If they don't work together right now and start to close this up, it is going to be nearly impossible because as you know, a peloton of riders, they can go faster than a few riders by themselves. And this is a strong, strong group. No kidding. And right there at the front, a lot of these riders just lean over to Rachel and say, not so fast, Bubba. You're not getting away from us now. We are going to make sure that you are with us. This is not the time either. They're about to hit a big descent here. Strategically, they can't really get an advantage for the power that they put out because everybody can get a big top speed. And maybe you're going 57 kilometers an hour and you pass somebody who's going 55. That's a lot of power for very few uh, you know, kilometers per hour over the other one. You can't get a big gap. They surge around, maybe coming through this sprint section, maybe somebody wants that green jersey. Very possible. Wow, we see Irina out of the saddle right now in her Mazda pink and blue here in the stadium. And uh, she is doing very, very well. This is more her stage than that mountain climbing stage where she had to struggle. Now, she's a strong, tall, muscular rider. Some and big she's watts got there, Chris. Big, big watts. watts. And she's got to be able to also take her kilos and mix that in. That watch per kilo is a big deal. And it costs you if you're a big, strong rider on the mountain but it benefits you when you're on a more of a flat course or where the, uh, the climbing isn't so protracted. Now here's the big question as we kind of come up to this. We know historically the time to attack on this is when you hit Hanks, you come in that big section. Rachel has backed off a little bit. She hasn't tried to ride away because this group is not allowing her to ride away. We should also mention that if you're watching on Cycle View, you've noticed that Beth, Taya, uh, Harriet, uh, that group has come back. Inga Jansen also in that group. They are all back together. Grupo Compacto coming around through Sprint Town on the cobbles, about to come out past the waterfall, and their slow slog up to Hanks. That's the spot, isn't it, where we see the most fireworks? Absolutely, you know, and this is a, a BO2 max effort. It is above their threshold, and it is going to be a challenge because they have to go over their threshold. They have to, they're going to be panting. This is the place where their breathing rhythm gets out of rhythm. And the thing is, how long can the rider hold on? That's always the question. Can they do it for three minutes? Can they do it for a little bit longer? They're going to be hurting. Their legs are on 
fire yes, here. Yes, they are. And the the you know what you got to think about here in the back of your mind, Chris, is Rachel's going to go again. You know she is. Can the other women hang on with her? And if they can't, can they keep her close enough they can catch her on the next hill? That's a great question. You know what I think that they've learned about Rachel Elliott? She definitely has high sustained power, but she does not have the same kind of explosive sprint burst that will get you away from a group like this. In the past, she's been against competitors who could not match or did not want to match the gap. And they were thinking maybe about their other finishing. Well, she got away, so I'm going to race for second here. These girls aren't doing that. They are letting the, uh, the their legs tell the story, and that is no different. Taya Freestead moving to the front here, saying, I'm going to rep Brazil as much as I can. Uh, husband Drew at home, another great cyclist, also on the ODZ squad, cheering for her. Lots of cycling families in Zwift here. But you see those other jerseys of the PTZ riders trolling the front, making sure that they are well represented. Maybe some team tactics going on here, Chris, you know, because you can do team tactics inside Zwift, and one rider can go off the front and another rider can sit on and make sure that rider that, that the chase is being neutralized just yes. like in the real world it's exciting to see and so that's something that we could see here coming up I mean and you know you got to think you know multiple riders on the same team we've got to have see some absolutely tactics. and I think we're going to we've got director sportif BJ Alfonso in the room here he's walking the line cheering his riders the ra uh, rider the men's uh, elite race also doing uh, the same. We see a lot of those riders walking up and down the line cheering these women on. And we have a big crowd here in the velodrome right now. Lots of people milling about. They can get close to the riders in ways that they haven't before. We're about to cross over the line. Taya Freestead near the front, but she gets past here just a little bit by Ione Johnson. And as she's going to try to catch on to the group. Yeah, she wants to stay right next to those green wheels, doesn't she? Here's where the fireworks are starting. This is the big section. Not the toughest spot, but many. Many, many things will be decided here. Here's the question. How long can you go at your highest level of pain? How long can you go before your legs just give out? Is that time going to be different for these other riders? Well, it certainly could be because some riders can ride above their threshold for a little bit longer than other ones. And that's a huge deal because all those riders are going to be really, really focused right now. And they are, are just at their limit. They're coming up to this hill with at their threshold and they're going above and beyond. So keep it going. Oh, here we look go. We this. see look some this. big stuff look getting this. dropped. Now we saw, you know, a, uh, a feather being dropped up there. One is still being worn. You know, the only thing she could get is that truck, and we're starting to see it spread out a little bit as we jump up the line a little bit more. Uh, Rachel moving to the front. Ioni, no. Ioni takes it back over again. Uh, Marion Sako right there. A little bit of a gap now. As much as three seconds. This is Rachel's big move. But how long does she have at this wattage? We've seen it slip, and so if they can stay on her wheel, there's Marion right there if she can slip into that draft. Oh, look at that face. Oh, nice, face. nice. She's got to close that gap and she knows it's about five. Close it down just a little bit more. The time to move is now as we discussed yep. yesterday. Marion, if she can catch onto this wheel, she's going to make Rachel do the hard work on the climb and it looks like she does. Another rider comes around. Marion's still in a great spot. Uh, she wants Rachel to chase, but she won't. Seeing those thumbs, uh, those right-ons fall into her back pocket. Marion Sako in a nice, comfortable position. Says again to Rachel Elliott, you can't just have it. Mm. Now, on a climb like she had before, uh, she showed that she was capable of pulling her back. I think this is the big battle here. I, it's very interesting to me. I don't know that Rachel's riding style gives her the ability to do what she's done in the past in a three-stage race. As a time trialist, if she can get that gap, she can motor to the finish, and she breaks the will of those around her. She can't do that in this environment. Now, what we see is Rachel Elliott. We see her focused on the front, but those other girls just sitting right on her wheel saying, have at it. Do a little bit more watts per kilo, and we're fine with it. Absolutely. Marion, Rachel, and Ioni right there in the front. You know, and Chris, this is a different course. Doing this in reverse, it makes the climb a much more gradual climb. Yes. And when you have a gradual climb, you can still get a draft. Yesterday, we saw in the first heat, it was the steep side of the climb yes. that broke the will. And that's a difference here. Now, all of a sudden, it's like Rachel doesn't have all of that steepness, all that gradient, all of her power to weight ratio to break it up. So there's a difference right there. You've got two other riders with them, and the chase is right behind Boy, them. And then we are seeing some hot numbers here at the top Look of this Look at Marion, field. holy cow. Marion, Rachel, Ioni, all dipping seven, eight, nine watts per kilo. They are throwing 
slowing down. They're making a big gap on Harriet and Irina who are behind them now. 11 seconds to the chase group. But this lead group of three, Ione Johnson, how about that? Not something that we expected. She did not have the finish that she wanted on the last one. Maybe saving a little uh, for this one as well. Now she got in that second position, Ione did, in that first race. And, and that is really critical. And she's showing that she belongs up here with Rachel and Marion. Those, those are the riders that we are definitely going to watch. That gap continues to grow to the chase group. Irina and Harriet now looking around at each other. Maybe a little de facto, uh, you know, kind of meet up on the road. They are going to work together to hold off Siri, Esther, Taya, and Inga. And unhinged off the back, we've got Beth. Boy, she needs a juice box or something to pull her up to that group. Her head's tilted to the side, doing as much work as she can. She knows she's got to get top speed here, that the time to catch this group is before the banner. And if she doesn't catch them before the banner, those four riders are going to be able to do way more on the front. And she's going to find herself alone, attacking off the back with no uh, one to cover. You know. She drops her arrow. Oh, there, she has to do it right now because those other riders, they start going downhill. They're going to be going 50 kilometers an hour, and she's still only going to be going 15 or 12 kilometers an hour up the hill. And that's yep. going to create a huge gap that she's, it's going to be almost near impossible to no catch up. No kidding. She's Rachel Elliott and her whole cadre over the top, they're going to descend a little bit here. There's no chance to get away. There's a little bit of a reprieve. They're going to spin their legs out. No doubt that... Uh, that Rachel Elliott is going to head back into the ammo room and start loading up her magazine so she can fire more shots through the rest of this race. Well, and if she doesn't go, if she doesn't go to the front right now, if Rachel doesn't go to the front and push that pace, Irina and Harriet are going to catch back on. And, and also, and there's a group right that's there. That's true. That's true. They're only six seconds back. They've got a nice group, 17 seconds back to that chase group. They're all descending now, and we're seeing that gap drop. When Irina and Harriet hit that flat, they're going to need to really put in a big effort, hope that they can put in a bigger effort than Ione and Marion and Rachel um, and actually close that gap. And I think they can do it. That will be the really interesting character of this part of the race. Now, as we gear up for this second lap, they're coming around the bridge. They're going to take a sweeping left-hander here. We're starting to see some of the, the tools that they have collected in their belt, which we won't say here, but if you're watching at home, you're watching on CycleView, you can see the, the power-ups that they are collecting. This is one of the cool characteristics of this game. Now, you can also see who got flat nothing in this group, which means that somehow in that they got points. They got fake points, which didn't give them anything. And in the uh, pressure luck kind of, you know, strategy there is big bucks, no whammies, no whammies. That is a whammy. That is <laughs> nothing. You've got nothing to use to close a gap. You've got nothing to use to launch an attack. No little benefits. And the riders around you do have those. And that makes them more dangerous uh, than you. So. And you know, and that's the beautiful thing, game thing about this virtual game, right? I mean, in the real world, what do you get? You get somebody to push you up the hill. That's right. right. Here, you've got a feather, right? Or you've got a draft, or you've got an arrow helmet, yes. right? That's the same kind of thing. It's a little advantage, and you can use it, and it's just. It's, it has to be done strategically, used at the right time. Do you want to use it at the sprint? Do you want to use it up the hill? Do you want to use it going down the hill? Yes. Where do you use these things? Critical, critical thing. Chris, I think I'm going to go down and Good. go check out and talk okay. to a few of these riders now. Okay, awesome. We'll get you in there. We see the confetti fly as we come under. We've got this big lead group. Harriet and Irina are putting in hard power, trying to get back to this group. It's a now or never thing. Uh, Beth York managed to get herself back in that group. A heroic effort. She did it before the top. We didn't see her do it, but we know she did it. There are some big time kudos and awards. Coaches, please. She gets a juice box. Welcome back to the group. It's just like youth soccer. Maybe she joins that group and one of the moms gives her some orange slices, right, and that juice box to make her feel good. Now, that group is uh, bonding together here. It's only 11 seconds back. Harriet and Irina. Oh, Marion with a big push on the front, making sure that she gets up the road just a little bit. So following Marion, we can see some interesting things happening in that original trio. 
Marion Sacco up the road, uh, Rachel right there with her, Ioni Johnson. It'll be interesting to see who's got the legs here. They're just kind of dancing around each other, asking, what do you got, sister? They're not organized at all. If they were trying to get away from Irina and Harriet, ah, and Harriet also gets away from Irina, but in the wrong direction. She slips three seconds back. Irina, knowing that she's close, has made the decision that the time to bridge is now, and she's got to do it. Harriet trying to catch on, but we see Irina disappearing into the ether, vanishing uh, like a wood sprite uh, into the dark forest. Irina heads up the road, and she has made the catch, caught that group. Often when you're in a nice flat like this and you catch the body language of the other riders, you can put in that one big nitro boost and kick it into gear and catch on to that group. Now she's got the important job of recovery and not allowing herself to get unhinged. A lot of riders taking a drink of water, but a lot of riders will grab that, that character three on the keyboard, the number three on the keyboard, which will allow her to see that first person view which gives you a more accurate uh, distance. Now, as we get ready to go to coach here, let's describe what's happening. Harriet not giving up. She is also putting in a dig of her own only two seconds behind Rachel, Irina, Marion, and Ioni. But we've got two groups on the field, really, if you count Harriet in that lead group, which she should be. Beth, Siri, Taya, uh, Esther, and Inga in that chase group 30 seconds back. Very cool. What are we finding on the course, uh, course coach? What do we see? I'm, I'm right here with Irina. She just crossed across that gap, got to the first three riders. She's in the front group right now. An incredible effort. She knew, like you said, she had to do it right then. And now we see another rider coming across. So we've got a group of five. Irina, can you tell us a little bit? How are you doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> are you going to make it? What are you doing? Are you just sitting in right now? Uh, yeah, just biding my time, I guess. All right. She's got to bide her time. She's got to make it. We got another climb, right? She's going to make it over top of that, and then we've got to finish. She's a strong rider. She can do it. So she is definitely a threat to Rachel overall. You know, this is a great, exciting, exciting race. Back to you, Chris. Boy, you're not kidding. Now, this gra uh, gap in the back there, again, this is for money here. We've got this big group, and right now they're working together. I don't think, based on their watts per kilo, that they are trying to bridge up to this group. If so, you'd have a strong rider on the front one at a time, setting a pace more blistering than those around them. Uh, Marion and Ioni doing the big work. Rachel drifts to the front of her group, but we see the field split into two races. We've got the lead race and we've got the chase race. And although they are five strong in each of these groups right now, we can pretty much guarantee that the doors are going to blow off on this second lap. They're cresting the top of this rolling section right here, known as the S's. They're getting ready to come down into Sprint Town. This is the shorter sprint piece right here. They're going to come down this hill. They're going to cross that bridge and they're going to sprint to that sprint banner. Uh, in the best of circumstances, it might only be 15 seconds in the worst of circumstances it might be 20 but it's a pretty quick section no one's going to get away right here this is not the time to get an attack because everybody's speed is so high but we should point out and I'll be interested to see if coach can glean any information from one of these PTZ riders it appears that they are working together in this group in this lead group we've coming through sprint town here you've got folks on the PTZ team Taya sees her uh, you know, friend right there as they're coming through Sprint Town. Sorry, we've got those three PTZ riders in the chase group. Um, we've got a, kind of a, a group of city-states right here. We've got no affiliation, no country, no king or queen in this case. We are coming through Sprint Town, past the fountain, under the big arch, into what will probably be the deciding factor of this race on the second lap. We'll go to coach right now to find out how things are shaping up. Hey, I'm over here with Harriet Dodd. She is looking great here in her yellow jersey with her yellow ribbons through her hair. She is kicking butt. She's in the lead group. She made it across. How are you doing, Harriet? Yeah, good, thank you. Just trying to stay with the wheels of the lead group. All right, she is on those wheels. She's ready to go. You know, it's a big, big effort. There's still that big climb, as you know. You feel like you have a good, good, uh, good climb in you. One more up the hill. Um, the last uh, stage took it out of me quite a lot, but we'll see. <laughs> All right. All right, there you have it. She she's, knows she needs to save a little bit of energy, but she knows she might have another one in her. So back to you, Chris. 
Boy, she did. She had to use a little of that fuel, had to use a little of that fuel to come across that gap. She and Irina found herself in a spot of bother, as it's often said by many commentators, far more experienced than myself. I'm not a real commentator. Um, just thought I'd let you in on that little secret. Um, I stayed at a Best Western last night, and I'm feeling pretty darn good. So, Harriet and Irina managed to bridge that gap. Irina in the pink when you see her face. Rachel with that painful lean. I have seen her drop down a little bit. We've unhinged. She has broken her heart rate monitor. Um, that means that she has more heart than anybody else. It's sending out electrical signals and it blew the thing up. She's definitely working, no doubt. Um, I believe that her list is 15 degrees to port right now. I think she'll stay afloat, but she's definitely taking on water. Marion and Ione are giving it to her one at a time over the top and forcing Rachel to do something she hasn't done before. And that something is to race with these other racers. Her MO is to launch off the front like a torpedo and then just motor until she detonates into the side of another ship. And if you're asking, are we going with a nautical theme? We are right now. Let's see how I can do this. Harriet doesn't want to have an anchor. Definitely she wants to stay connected, moored, if you will, to the rest of that group. She's a tug in tow, wants to stay with that group, and I think that they're going to do it. Now, as we come up to this critical spot. You see that smile across Harriet's face. She's just pleased to be in this group. She's got to commit, as these other writers do, to the next two minutes of pain. When they hit Hanks here, it's going to really kick up. Rachel's going to empty her tank and see what she's got, and we know what she can do. Harriet drifts to the front and says, uh, I think I'll take this, ladies. I'll show you how it's done. Out of the saddle in real life. Coming up, they're going to have to chase. Maybe they just don't worry about the little the little thing the new the new girl on the block but Irina does she says I want to go with you sweat pouring off her face that is work don't tell me this is a video game this is real work in a virtual world she manages to pull back her compatriot Harriet and then we see Rachel tag on but uncharacteristically Rachel doesn't blow by Rachel sits in sits on and ramps up she is using what she's got we see the feather drop we see another Another feather drop. Here's where the fireworks are going down, people. Blowing off the front. Unbelievable. As she's digging up the road here, we've got Ione Johnson trying to deliver the fatal blow. More drop. Rachel Elliott off the back. Can you believe it? Now we're seeing these big gaps develop. Rachel cannot respond. She is maxed out. All she had was a draft boost. That is not the one you want. And these women are going away. The question is, can they stay off the front? Coming around, Osula right there. She is almost there, almost there. Now Ione Johnson's got to grab that wheel. She had a heroic effort off the front. Uh, Irina comes around her too. Grab that wheel, girl. Don't let it get away from you. Grab that wheel and stay on. Boy, this is an exciting race. It is really, really happening here. They're going to come together. We've got three riders building this effort together. The gaps continue to grow. Rachel Elliott, five seconds behind. Harriet hanging on three seconds seconds behind her. Rachel trying to do as much as she can, but these three riders are strong. Everybody came into this race thinking Rachel Elliott was going to run away with all three, but this has not been her race. They did not let her go. Marion Sako on the front now. Irina once behind, off the back, bridges back up heroically to catch these riders and catches the move when she needs to. She held in her pocket in perfect reserve that amazing power up and was able to deliver it right when she needed it. This is an exciting race, Hunter. What is going to happen from here to the end? Okay, we're going to kick this up here right now. Thanks, Coach, for that. You know, it is Rachel Elliott trying to chase right now. She is five seconds back of Ione. Ione's going to try to stay off the front here. She'd like to make that connection, but Marion Sako with a big kick. She wants this to be her moment. She doesn't want to have to... Uh, race the big sprinter at the line. She wants her gap. Irina knows that this is her moment. Once she hits that big descent, Rachel Elliott now passing Ione. 
They are together in a chase group. Ioni, they, I think she's hit the anchor here. She's Whoa. giving it everything she's got, and Rachel is moving away from her like she's standing still. Rachel into her big power gear, only five seconds behind Irina. We may have written Rachel out too soon. She is digging to the front here. Still only the second stage of this three-stage race. Irina trying to maintain as much power as she can, glancing over, making sure that she's at least matching what Rachel's doing, but it doesn't look like she's got that much fuel in the tank. But Marion Sako, the French rider on her home turf, has got to just deliver at this point. She's giving everything she's got. She knows that the transition over the top she hopes she gets a great power up, oh, but she's look at that not face. leaving it to her. She is look surrounded. At that face. She is giving it everything she's got. She's giving it everything she's wow. got. Wow. Now she's gonna come up over the top here. Yeah. And what has she got to do with her speed? She has got to maximize her speed. If she had an arrow helmet, this would be the time to use that helmet. Now she to dropped get it over. earlier. She dropped that she's feather to it. get the break. And so now it sees she's, what well. she gets. Now we won't reveal it. You yep. at home can yep. see there or you go. on cycle view will be able to see. And uh, she's gonna dig that. Boy, look at that face. Look at that face. I mean she is killing it, and I told you this was it. I mean, she is really going for it. This is it's, this is all or nothing. She's all in at this point. She is all in at this point. She's going to descend this hill, uh, and you know the power up that she's got. Maybe the one she wants, maybe not. We don't know. But she's not leaving it to chance. She's not leaving it to game strategy here. She's putting it all in her legs and she's pushing it down. Now Rachel has caught Irina. This is the crazy part. Seven seconds uh, from Rachel to Marion. Marion is uh, doing everything she can. Rachel is equally emptying her tank. She has slipped Irina off the back. If Irina can do anything to catch on, she definitely has the ability to sprint around Rachel at the end here, but that gap seems to be growing. Ioni, next one back, two seconds for Irina. She can see her competitor up there. The question is, can she spike her wattage right now? It would be a big boon for her to climb up in these overall standings uh, after her less than ideal finish last time. She can jump a number of people if she can jump Rachel Elliott. The question is, can she ring that bell of oh. 1,000 watts? I don't yeah. think Rachel can, but I really believe Irina can. I think so. I think you're right. And I told you earlier, Chris, this was the threat to Rachel. Oh, Irina was absolutely goodness. the threat. So if she gets her, it is going to be game over for okay. Rachel. It is going to be tough. It is time that we jump in. This is the big finish, and we're going to see what's happening. Marion Sako holding on for dear life. Look at that face. Watts. Look at that face. But the gap is only two seconds. Oh, now, she's gosh. being chased hard by Rachel Elliott. She's out of the saddle in the game. She's putting down max power. She's got to ring that bell. Can she get 500, 600 watts? It doesn't matter what she has left. So Drill it. But now we see Rachel Elliott in a rear view mirror. She's inside of that space. We can see her numbers. She's closing on her. One second back in the cyclogen rankings. She's only one second back. So scary. Rachel could come around her right here at the end. Marion doesn't want to let her have it. She sees the banner. We're going to stick right here on Marion Sako. She's got to drill everything, everything, everything to the line and, and manage it. Got it. Unreal. She's got it. Rachel comes across second. Irina is going to drift across in third. The crowd goes crazy. They are gathered around her. You can't get close to this, the cyclist oh. like you can in here. Look at this. I mean, oh, she's got unreal. 25, 30 people all around her. Rachel I mean, what Elliott an with a heroic effort. performance. I, we got to mention it. Oh, I yeah. mean, she oh, was yeah. five seconds back of this trio. Yeah. And she cranked that dial to 11. Right? She over put, the top. That's right. right. Over she the top. started her list to the uh, to starboard from <laughs> 15 degrees. I think she got her list to 19 degrees at one point, uh, taken on water and yep. continued to just drill. And she not only caught Ioni, she caught Irina, yep. and she almost, almost caught Marion. Almost. Unreal. What an incredible effort. What an incredible effort no by her. Kidding. And incredible by Marion. I mean, Marion knew that that yes. was the, she made the attack at the right exact time when Rachel was in the hurt locker, and uh. she kept it. And did you see Marion's face? Yes. Oh, oh, that was some serious suffering okay. going on right there. We're going to jump back into this chase group because there's another race to call here. Taya Freestead to the front. These are the five remaining riders and they are vying for spots and they are uh, vying for money here. Big this money. is important. These points matter in the overall standing. You cannot come in fifth here and feel happy that you all finish together. Pack time doesn't matter. 
Oh, and we see uh, these start to drop. They drop these arrow helmets. We see them, oh, two trucks in the group as well. Unchievement unlocked. Esther, as she digs here, she's a relatively new Zwift rider. Another 700 That's watts. That's right, she is crushing it. Look at her grind on those pedals, grind on those bars, and she comes across, wins that sprint. Uh, Esther Messels from the US comes across, and we see this group really finish out. We'll get the official in just a moment. But the way I look at it, we know that uh, Sako wins this, gets 20 points. We know Rachel Elliott right behind her. Irina, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me. I, Ioni. I, yeah, I, no, Irina uh, oh, yeah. Sola and yes. I, Irina, excuse me, <laughs> Ioni right <laughs> behind her. Easy for me to say. That's right. If you're using the uh, play at home game, you probably got that right. 10 points for those pronunciations. But then after, uh, we see nine points uh, to Dodd. We see seven points uh, to uh, to Mesos, who we just saw. We saw uh, six points to Jansen, who really jumped ahead in the group here, got a better position than she wanted. But Beth York manages to uh, to pip uh, Siri and yep. managed to get in front of her uh, compatriot, uh, uh, Taya Freestead. Yep. Now, Taya did I'm a I'm surprised. Yeah. She did really, really well yesterday. I am really surprised. Maybe she didn't recover enough. Well, you know, there may have been some recovery issues, but honestly, Taya and, and Beth really drove that chase group. They worked hard at the beginning, and some of these riders may have been just savvy and hung in a little bit. But it's also, too, when they're all together like that, isn't it just ultimately their high watts? Is there, is there a functional, physical difference between a, uh, let's say, a sprinter uh, and and like a pursuit. Right? Absolutely, I mean, you know. What's different about the physiology? Well, they have different muscle fiber types and different percentages of those. They have fast twitch muscles and they have slow twitch muscles. And the difference is the percentage. Some have a little bit more fast twitch. Some have a little bit more slow twitch. And that combination with their cardiovascular system is really what determines how successful they are at a given event. So it's not just the type of workout that you do. It's not just necessarily your body type. But there's some genetic involved yes with absolutely absolutely there's genetics involved and you know and that's the hardest thing to to deal here with is if you're not a sprinter you know you still have to train it you still have to do a little bit you know of that training to see if you can get that sprint to to work it it's hard to improve your sprint <laughs> but you know we can you can always kind of improve your FTP that functional threshold power where you ride right at the limit you know and that's what Rachel Elliott has she has that incredibly high functional threshold power yes, and she does. today uh, you you know, in the second race, we saw exactly that, the fact that she couldn't just drive it and let all of the riders just die and get dropped off of there. They caught back up. That's they the did. nature of a road race. It's yes. up and down. You've got the Peloton right there. It's not just who's got the best watts per kilogram. And worth pointing out, this is you know functionally different than any other kind of standards Zwift race that you pick up, where it's all or nothing at the beginning. It separates. There's very little action that happens, these groups stayed together. They're so evenly balanced here at ZVR World uh, here in Paris. And as, as the camera is cast down the line, I see our cameraman really kind of showing us the, the global scale. You see all of these fans milling about. You see the riders getting a quick uh, recovery, some, some water. They're taking in some food with just a couple of minutes before the start. What do you got to squeeze in here? What's the magic? Man, you know, they have got to absolutely get some nutrition in them. This is the last stage. They've got to be doing gels. I saw uh, somebody eating a half a banana. I saw another person do an electrolyte drink. I mean, now is the time they're resting a little bit they're just letting their legs soften up i saw some of them massaging some of their quads there, just trying to get some yeah. some suppleness back into the muscles to get supple. ready for this that is a good word ladies and gentlemen the word of the day is <laughs> supple right. you may use that whenever you like that's right yesterday's word of the day was reciprocity. Okay. <laughs> All right, there so you go. So as we get ready to go, there'll be no reciprocity between these riders. You cannot exchange value for value here. In fact, they're going to close down the market. And maybe it's too soon, but some kind of Brexit from one another. Uh, they're going to leave this union and they're going to put it all on the line. Rachel Elliott has the most to lose in here because she no longer is in the lead of the points, right? She is now dead even with Marion Sacco. Yeah. They both have 
36 points a piece. So whoever comes out on top will be the winner of this one. Now this is a crit race. This yep. favors a Marion Sacco versus uh, a, a Rachel Elliott. And yep. so she won't be able to ride away. There are only a couple of spots on this course where you can make a real difference, aren't there? Absolutely so. And I mean, there's that little tiny hill, which is really just a pimple. It's not very much at all. You just pop over that thing, and all <laughs> these riders are going to just... Did you catch that, folks? Did you catch that at home? <laughs> that was beautiful. That's what that was. <laughs> they're they're going to they're gonna ride together as a peloton, and, you know, it's going to be a sprint, probably. Yeah, I think you're right. And, I, and right. Rachel is not favored in a sprint. Not you know? favored in a it's sprint. Not this is really interesting because this is not favored the kind of power that she did. Only 15 seconds left. This gate is going to drop. And then we're going to see very quickly if any of these other riders have different designs for this race. They're not going to be comfortable sitting around waiting for these two women to sprint it out. They're going to say, it's still an opportunity. We hear the spin up. Here the we gate go. drops. We've got riders out of the saddle to make sure that they're putting down that power. We see early Taya Freestead making sure that she doesn't get dropped behind in the panic here. We are going to settle down pretty quick. They've seemed to learn this model a little bit better and they don't go so crazy. That could be part of the fatigue as well too. But they just want to stay connected. They don't want that gate drop to turn into something that it shouldn't be, which is a separation off the back. Unless you find yourself gapping a little bit here and Esther did. Esther finds herself off the back. How dangerous is, is this well, early in this last race? She's got to get right up there, right? In group right away because they are rolling. I mean, they are rolling and she's coming right back on. Okay, so that's good. great. Absolutely. That's what she's got to be because there's no, you do not want to be out of the group here and drop in the beginning because otherwise it is going to be painful. And every single rider needs to be marking Rachel. I mean, yes. it, it might be nine against one here. It's going to be a challenge. She is definitely going to be challenged. Yes, she is. Now, Esther in this group, you know, she is, is sitting pretty high in the points uh, right now. Really, the next one in that group, Irina, with some great finishing. She's gotten herself 20 points in the deal. Uh, Ione Johnson sitting at 24 points. They are still within striking distance if they can get away and some of these other riders can swamp the others. Mathematically, there are probably still five or six riders capable of taking home the top prize here. I think the favorites still are Marion Sacco and Rachel Elliott. Rachel usually puts in a big dig here. This is one of the spots she likes to try to get away, but she may not in this case. She doesn't have, as we talked about, that high power. When you talk about the, the physique, she is an unbelievable time trialist. If we do an, uh, an, a single a time trial with all of these riders, I don't think there's any doubt that Rachel's going to come away with it. There'll I be some agree. close second, third, yeah. but Rachel is definitely the odds-on favorite for an event like that. Absolutely, and we saw it on the hill climb. You know, I mean, she just laid it down. She has that ability to sustain yes. a really high power. Her watts per kilogram ratio is excellent and she can just suffer. I mean, you saw no her face. Kidding. She is really able to do that. And that's where this is different. I mean, this is, a, you know, we talked about it earlier today. It's the neuromuscular power. It's the ability to go hard and then recover quickly. Go hard, yes. recover quickly. They're short, hard efforts. Five seconds. 10 seconds, three seconds, 15 seconds, and then you recover and you get a little bit of a break. It's it's difficult to see, but you know they're changing their cadence, they're changing their speed, and they got to stay in the group. And that is a different, yes. different thing. And the genetics and the, the the training that you do is different than you do for just pure climbing or pure time trialing. So here we can see yes. that Irina might be the one to really watch. But yeah, mm -hmm. you know a lot of ladies here, they've got a, a great chance on this third stage. Yes, I think I think Rachel surprised Irina with how much power she was able to put down at the end there. I think a lot of us thought Irina is super sprinter there and that is definitely within her her skill set. She's got that arrow in her quiver. She can do that. But uh, but she was not going to be denied. That's the one thing about Rachel that's so interesting. So you mentioned that ability to suffer. Rachel has that ability to suffer. A lot of people don't know about that. Uh, uh, her training includes a number of other things that are high level suffer stuff. She's listing at about 15 degrees right now, but included <laughs> in her suffer training. She's watched an entire season of Charles in Charge. Whenever oh. she goes out to Thai food, she always orders oh. four pepper. When she gets an ice oh water, it's gosh. still four pepper. She likes to train that suffer, and she makes sure that she does it. She'll always Incredible. go over to her in-law's house, oh. even when she doesn't need to. She is uh, you're very making well, up stuff now, Chris. No, she's well acquainted with suffering. She knows all about it. 
but she's kind of staying near the front here. I think she's going to make an attempt yeah. to try to get away. I don't think uh, that uh, Harriet is going to let her do it, certainly. Uh, well, she's got yeah. to attack. I mean, the only way that Rachel can really win the stage is if she attacks and Whoa. gets away. I Bold mean, that's the statement. only yeah. thing. That's the only. I think that's the only way she can win. Otherwise, she's going to drag these ladies around, and it's going to be a sprint finish, and it's going to be really tough for her. So, I mean, her strategy has to be go off the front, go off the front, and just try and do the best that she can do, and yep. maybe multiple attacks. And that's where uh, you know I think that's what we need to see right here. I think you're right. Now, two race favorites, Beth and. Taya find themselves at the back of that group. When the fireworks happen, they don't want to be at the back of that group. As they continue to do their savvy racing thing, they know that this is a good course for them based on their abilities and that they have the opportunity for a higher and higher finish. They definitely want to move up that group, make sure that they're near the front but not on it, patrolling the front of the race. It is that front third that makes such a big difference. We've got a little bit of a push off the front here. Is that Irina out in front? Hard to see at this point. We've got one rider off the front. No, it looks like Inga Jansen who says, this is kind of my territory, ladies. Let me do the thing that I do. Maybe trying to sneak away here a little bit, doing a little magic trick on the course, uh, trying to create a little magic, but they're not going to have it. They're not going <laughs> to let her go, right? Well, at well, this point, there's no, there's no victory, even if you have more points in letting someone else get away yep. and steal the stage. Yep. And you know, and we saw that in an earlier race today, a rider snuck away yes. and had in our earlier women's race, she snuck away and she got a little gap and then she mm -hmm. got a little bit bigger gap and the other ladies just kind of watched her go and then the next thing you know, she had five seconds and she put her head down and then it was 10 and it was 15. You know, that could be the spoiler here. Yes, yes it could. Really interesting tech happening out here and one of the interesting things, not everybody has them on but many of the riders are using the Four Eyes Viver right, the V4I, V-E-R, which is a heart rate monitor, now again, not everybody using it, that will actually send two signals out simultaneously. One to, say, your device, and one to something like a trainer like this, so that you don't have to share that signal between them. And that's a really nice piece of tech that James uh, Titanium Geek has here with us today. Four eyes uh, doing a great job of kind of putting the tech in here and giving it a strong test here at CBR uh, World. That, that's oh, awesome. You know, and Chris, and we've got so much tech here. It's, <laughs> it's really unbelievable. No I mean, we, we've got enough computer power here to power like the, the space station. It yes. is absolutely amazing with all of the monitors and the computers and all these smart trainers and power meters on the bicycles. And it, it is absolutely an incredible, incredible achievement here to put all this together and to be able to stream this to you Ooh, guys live. We got a big deal coming up here. Uh -oh, we uh -oh. see some things start to drop. We've got a, that arrow helmet that drops that's going to move her to the front. Who is it that's wearing that hard to see Here's from this angle? Here's that little, little popper. Yes, little popper. We are on board with Rachel Elliott doing her best to stay connected with what's going on. Is that the person she should chase? That is the big question. Sako and Elliott have to be smart with their pursuits here because they don't want either to let someone get away, but they also don't want to be the one doing all the work to pull the group back. They've got to be smart about who they choose to chase and not just chase everything that comes up because you know what? You can only burn so many matches. Isn't that right? Absolutely. You know, and Rachel's looking kind of stressed right there. I must admit, she is looking a little stressed. Mm, 17 I, I, she, degrees to starboard. She might be, she might have burned a few matches already and, and I think she might be feeling it because, uh, you know, this isn't a hard section right now. I mean, it's not that difficult. It's hard, okay, but it's yes. not that hard. It's, it's not, not that on, the, on the not she's not on the limit. She shouldn't be. So um, I think that uh, we're seeing a little chink in the armor. Yes, Marion Sako kind of moving to the front there. Interesting to see who we've got on the front. Uh, a, Rachel also kind of drifting near and around that front, making sure that she the kind of creates what's happening. That actually does in fact look like Rachel, but Marion's not going to let her go. She's wearing that orange jersey, which says, uh, by the way, ladies, I had the fastest lap on the uh, reverse hilly, and uh, I'm going to wear that proudly. It's in game for her. She'll keep it for an hour or until someone else takes the best time, which I don't think is going to happen. Not going to happen no. today. No. <laughs> is there somebody else stronger than these women out on the course today? Probably not. So she catches on to Rachel Elliott. You see the ODZ riders right there in her. That is Taya, by the way, with no hair. We love that kit on her driving a little bit further up the road. 
Now, Rachel Elliott kind of drilling it there, not far off the back. We see Rachel Elliott and those stripes coming down her back on Taya Freestead's camera, sitting in that, uh, that third position, that, that numeral three on the keyboard, which gives you that first person view. They're coming around here on the flat. They're gonna pass by the tunnel that they launched onto this course with. Now we're coming around for the second full lap of three on this course. We have a gap out front. There what is, is that happening gap. there? There's that I gap. think that's gonna be one of our riders off the front here. Who is that? Hard to see, not Ione Johnson. Definitely not Ione Johnson. Um, although it shows that in the in the standings here. Interesting to see, trying to figure that out. No, it, it appears still to be Rachel Elliott kind of sticking around on the front there. Okay, so we do have the group here. As yep, you look around, all you together. see yep. those PTZ riders. I'll be very interested to see if you can glean a little bit of strategy from them. But if you're a PTZ rider and you want a result on this, who are you picking for your sprinter? And who is going to soften up the field with attacks to allow that sprinter oh. to have the most left? Oh my gosh, it, that is a really tough call because all three of these ladies could do very, very well. And I think that the biggest thing that they need to do is they need to start launching attacks right now. If they don't soften up Rachel it is gonna be tough and you know we saw her earlier she was suffering a little bit and I think that she's burned some matches and they need to start softening her up because one if we, they can get enough attacks and get one rider off the road that PTZ team could really take it all it's interesting yeah it's very uh, they're in the opera they have the opportunity to do exactly that the PTZ team uh, really kind of hovering there near and around the front you know what they could play North Korea in this situation they could line up some <laughs> missiles and launch but no clue what's going to happen here. Everybody else would have to, in that circumstance, move their ships into place and say, not so fast, not so fast, Kim Jong-il. So what we want here is the ability for these riders to get off the front. That's the thing that's going to animate this race a little bit. The tension is building. You know what? You can turn on your best Hans Zimmer soundtrack, maybe The Rock, uh, maybe... Uh, the Last Samurai, very good soundtracks to listen to the rest of this race. I'd recommend track six on both, by the way. <laughs> As we look at this big view, so many thumbs up possible to give there. That is a best lap for those riders as they come around, an opportunity. You'll notice though, right there in the mix, you've got a double jersey. That is somebody who is wearing that double jersey, earned them both, and is currently the holder of both sticking off to the side there. We also have our sprint leader with that green jersey off to the side as well, who we are following. And of course, uh, well, no, that's Rachel Elliott that we're following and that, uh, that jersey behind. But they're all still together. They're going to come out of the caldera here into the beautiful light of day. Watopia is a beautiful place. You should vacation there sometime. <laughs> hey, you know, maybe I'll it, win a vacation it there. It would be nice to do. <laughs> what do you think? Now two laps down, uh, getting, well, sorry, into the second lap, coming around to getting ready to start that third lap. What are we going to expect to see in strategy from these riders? Oh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm really hoping for some attacks here because I think that they've got to absolutely do it. I mean, they have got to push it. They've got to start attacking. They've got to start animating this race because otherwise it, they're just cruising around. It's going to be a peloton. It's going to be a sprint finish. Yep. And that doesn't, doesn't um, bode well for Rachel. It doesn't bode well for a couple of these other riders. And uh, if I was Rachel right now, I think I'd throw down some attacks because I... She's got to win. She's got to push it. She's trying. It's going to be close. If she doesn't, if she gets eighth or ninth in this race, mm -hmm. and it's going to be bad for the overall. So Inga in the 10th position, as we look down the line, we see Inga in the 10th position, and it's sticking out of her shoulder right there appears to be a fork, which would indicate maybe she's he done in done. this case. A PTZ rider Take as well, not other. able to help her teammates, but she finds herself 40 seconds off the back. Now, she's a very strong rider, but she's smart to sit up here and not blow out a muscle. There are many more races this year. She's learned a ton in this race. 42 seconds back now, Inga Jansen. And it's going to be one of those big finishes here. Many PTZ riders still in there trolling the sidelines, of course, is BJ Alfonso, the director sportif of PTZ. They're very proud of their women's team. As we come up here, we can expect to see, there's one right now, starting to see those pieces drop. Is this the opportunity for Rachel Elliott? Or is she trying to see if she can muster a little bit of a sprint at the end? I don't know that it's within her capability to do it. I would expect sometime very soon here before we ring that bell for the final lap for Marion to see what she's got left in it. I don't expect that we're going to see all nine riders 
vying for that position at the end, I think we're going to see some things break apart. The fireworks are yet to come. Yeah. So if you're trolling the line, and I know yep. you're going to, what are some of the things that you're looking for in these riders? What, what are some tells? Well, you know, there is absolutely some tells because their faces, they get, they get wrinkles in their faces, right? It's right. like they are stressed. You can see their face when they're stressed. You can see what their body language is doing. Is there, are their shoulders moving up and down? Are their hips rocking? You know, how much are they having to put into this effort and pedal? Are they getting up and out of the saddle? Maybe not. You know, some of them, they look almost as fresh as they did when they first started this race. Other ones, oh, look at this. Here's Siri. She's oh, looking like yeah. she's stressed a little bit. You know, this is tough mm -hmm. for her to stay in there. She's rocking back and forth. She's definitely, you know, putting out some some efforts here. Yep. And of course, we're always looking at their metrics. What's their heart rate doing? You know, mm -hmm. how many watts they're doing? How's their cadence? All those things, you know? And there we see Rachel. Oh yeah, she's My got, look, goodness. she's gritting her teeth. She is. Uh, There's no doubt, you know, we've made we made her the subject of so many comments here, but, but she is without she a is. doubt smiling now as she smiling. is known to do. She is happy to be in a good race here. She's proud to be among these women and she is kind of dictating what they do at this point because she she is the threat here. Now, Harriet, uh, you know, is up there in that group as well. Uh, Esther also in that group, uh, trolling the front. Uh, Marion just a little bit further back, but not really in a bad position there. Marion also a big threat to the rest of these women. It'll be interesting, but the longer you let the Irenas and the Bess and the series hang around, the more you risk what they can do on this final lap. And those are strong riders. Now don't tell me that Beth, who sat on this desk all day, <laughs> doesn't have a few sparks left uh, to start a big fire I out on the does. course here today. I think she does, absolutely. And Chris, I think I'm going to go down here Good. and go talk to some of these riders. I'll meet, see you in a couple Lots of things happening uh, online, lots of people cheering. Those who are jumping into the cycle view right here, seeing some fabulous stuff. Uh, Ian, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last name, cheering for Inga Jansen, more cheers for Taya Freestead. The money now over $45,500. People continue to cheer. We're seeing these names. Again, Anonymous doing a great job uh, cheering for Taya Freestead. Anonymous, again, my favorite poet. Anonymous also cheering heavily at this time for, again, Taya Freestead. Um, there are so many folks jumping in and, and cheering. We see that number going up and up and up, and people are contributing to this as well. Now, these writers, you know, most of them have pretty recognizable descript, uh, indescript bikes, right? They're, they're riding the black bikes. Maybe you've got somebody with a pink bike, but the wheels that you cannot miss, you'll see on Taya Freestead, who's unlocked that Zwift Experimental, AKA the Tron bike. She is drilling her light cycle right into the MCP cone right here, and she is gonna defeat that evil master control program if she's got any chance here. Now, they're back in the caldera. They've got lightning, or not lightning, but all of this uh, lava licking up on either side. Um, we see that stationary front wheel, uh, she's, and the spinning, spinning, spinning of the folks uh, right there. I'm not sure which rider that is. No, I know who that is. That, those were ODZ socks, ladies and gentlemen. You know that you are a cycling <laughs> superstar if you've got virtual world team real life socks. Now, as they come around here, some of them might, may try to exchange. A couple of them did, but I think a couple of them are too tired or may have exactly the power up that they want. We're seeing the power-ups, and if you've got the right power-up, which in this case, if you are someone who wants to get off the front, that is that aero boost. Some people want to hang on to that truck and stick right on the wheel of someone they really suspect to use that. This is the chess game. This is the strategy of this eSport, right? It's a blend between physical sport and eSport. And we've got Coach trolling the line right now, ready to go to tell us how these uh, racers are reacting as we get ready for the big finish coming around on the last lap to go. I am with Ioni right now, and she is looking strong. She is doing really, really well in this group, and uh, I think she's got a strong finish, too. I think she also got the power-up that she wanted. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but she got the one that she wanted. How are you doing? I'm going good. All right. Are you ready for this, uh, this finish? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you ready to kind of give it all you got, huh? This is the finish. This is the big finish. You got it. Yeah, last race of the season. 
All right, another last race of the season. We've seen a lot of riders finishing out. They've had big seasons all year. It's a perfect, perfect finish here. We're 3.2K to go now. It is getting really hot. That lava is lapping at the side of the road. Absolutely. Oh, we see Rachel Elliott kind of drifting to the back here. This is not really danger at this point. She's got to stay connected to the group. She's got to make uh, the, the time that she really wants to do this. Now we're on the flat. We are probably at the point where the most fireworks are going to drop. Those who do not want to get caught up in the big sprint, who think they've got a chance to power away, are going to do so in about 20 seconds. They're going to make a big left-hander here. They're going to come up that hill, and they're going to deliver what they've got left. Some will try to survive, some will try to dictate. We'll see who the predator and the prey are very, very soon. But everybody is looking around. Rachel Elliott seeing uh, that these girls are right around her, her cadence dropping just a little bit as everybody's cadence is dropping. We can tell how fresh they are and the answer is not. We come up this hill, they're still in a big group. No big power drops at this point. I don't see anything dropping. How is it possible that all these women are together? There we go. Esther drops her, her excuse me, her feather. She's going to climb to the front of this group. Maybe less about a, a, like a specific attack. She's maybe got 10 seconds left on this power up. She's going to get herself off the front just a little bit now what can she do here's the benefit of using it when she did she's managing to keep her speed higher she came by those folks at at least three four kilometers an hour faster than the folks around her and she's got a little bit of a gap right here it's not much but it's something and she finds herself the leader on the course she is Esther right now the leader on the course next in line is actually Marion Sako and she comes around her big push right there and we're not very far behind and we've got Rachel in her, in her uh, slipstream, as it were, coming up to the big finish. We can see the end of this course just up ahead. They are starting to drill. We can expect some big things to drop. There's no big rise, but you can see that arch in the distance there. They are really gearing up. This is where it's going to happen. Thank you for sticking around, CVR World Cup Paris. This is where the money is won. Here we go. Rachel in a great position. Does she have a sprint or is Marion going to steal it from her? This is where it happens. Anybody can steal it at this point. There are still five, six, seven riders in the gun here. And they're, uh, you know what, they're not going to gear up. We thought we were going to see some explosiveness. But they're going to come right outside here. They're going to come outside and come into the caldera on the other side. We thought we were going to get a big sprint right there. But hey, when you call a race all day like I do, you get a little <laughs> bit confused. And, and to talk about that confused, I brought my mother. She's sitting right next to me on the day. Mom, how am I doing and how are they doing on the course? Hey, I think you need some more gel or something, you know. But uh, at the same time, the, the 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 this is look, their speed is gotten up. And the intensity in the riders is much higher. They are all ready to go. They are they are really they know this finish is coming. They know they are close. They know that this is going to be the finals. And we see the riders separating just a okay, little bit. And we've got some real action on oh, the front oh, oh, here. Oh, look at that! Big time, big push off the front. Esther trying to catch on. Irina actually has a big gap here. How she snuck away, we cannot know, but they are up the field. As, yeah, definitely. This is Irina, a move. Yep, Osola up the road. Big move happening here. Esther trying to catch on. Ioni in that chase group as well. That Rachel is not going to get left behind. There she is. She snuck away right after that climb. We were talking about crazy stuff, and she took that opportunity. Everybody lulled to sleep. This is a gutsy move. Is it too soon? Maybe, but she's going to answer that question here shortly. She's got to keep it above 300 watts. How long can she hold over 300 watts? No one knows, but she's got a group chasing her. Ioni trying to catch on as well. She definitely wants to bring that Australian flavor over the line in front of your American compatriot and friend. The rest of this group, Marion, Harriet, Rachel, and Esther chasing behind. Rachel and Marion still are going to be jumping for that finish here. Big push right there. Ioni is going to catch on to her. She's definitely got more watts. Irina on the front. We definitely want to see what she's seeing here. They're dropping power ups like crazy. We're dropping Irina on the front. There she is. She's coming, but look right in her Johnson. Right in her just tail right there. Will she come around? And then we'll jump immediately to the next group. We'll jump immediately as soon as she crosses. Irina will give you both. There's only five seconds between them. Irina's going to come across first. Rachel coming across right there. Can Marion come around her? Can Marion come around her? We've got to see it. 
And if we see it on Ione Johnson right after, it looks like Rachel Elliott jumps over. Sako cannot come around her at the end. Wow. Hopefully we can bring that to you in a replay, but we've got this right here. So unbelievable. We'll see the points. They'll break down in a second. Her body language says it all. Irina struggled in the first. She pulled it together, recovered in the second. Yep. She delivered the goods oh, in the incredible. third. Incredible, and what an opportunistic attack. I mean, oh. she snuck away, and the other ladies, they were right there. They couldn't make that, that gap right at the end, and perfect, perfect timing. You know, it's almost like Irina opened up the playbook, and she moved to the chapter that says crazy bleep, right? <laughs> and she went down the list. She was, all right, crazy bleep, let's go. Let's go about a mile out. Let's, <laughs> okay. let's attack then solo and see if anybody comes with right. and you know what it worked but yep. the the problem with going to chapter seven crazy bleep is that you've got to make sure that you deliver on that promise yeah, she did and you know we talked about at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the race she's got big watts right yeah, she's she got that big power she was able to hold it and that was exactly what she did and she had to do it she put it down and she put it down early and she kept it all the way to the yeah, line she did Unbelievable. Rachel Elliott lost in this mire of all of these riders coming across. And I think we've got almost everybody in the finish right now. Almost everybody in the finish. Inga's still on course. I think maybe, we, yeah, we've got her still on course. We'll give her time in just a second. Was, and we'll, this is unofficial at this point. We're not reporting this. Yep, we'll yep, get this yep. from the officials in just a moment. But it looks to me uh, like Rachel comes around uh, at the end. We've got a little bit of disparity on the site, but we'll get all the official yep. here in just a second. Right? Asola, uh, Johnson, and Elliott. Is that, is that the order? I, uh, you know, excellent. And, and who we've got in fourth? That would be Sako. Okay, Sako comes in fourth. And we know the way the points work out. They were dead even coming into this. That likely, and the way I'm looking at it right now, gives Rachel Elliott 49 points. Unofficial, 47 uh, for Marion, uh, right behind her. And then tied. And this will be the interesting yeah. piece. Yeah, They've got to happen? work these details out. And I, I've got the finishing order right, right here. here we go. I don't know. Uh, thank you very much. I don't know if this is, we've got a tie for third. Wow. A tie for third. So they're going to calculate that overall finishing time, and that's going to determine the difference between those. And we should have yep. that shortly. They're cooling down a little bit. I know that you're going to jump over to yep. the stage and give us those details. In ear here, I'll have the opportunity to get all of those winners on stage. We're going to award each of these groups. Stick around for just a few minutes. You're asking yourself, hey, I've been watching all day. When are you going to give me my computer? It's coming <laughs> up soon. We're going to give away that alien computer in just a moment. So you definitely want to stick around. And uh, the, the praise continues to come in. Twitter, it blowed up, uh, right? We broke Twitter. They <laughs> we didn't. might be breaking the internet with this. It de we've definitely broken the internet several times during this broadcast. And so we're going to give you all of those details. But we have Asola, Johnson, and Elliot on that podium. Sako managed to just come wow. in a squeaker right behind Elliot. That's our finals for this race. Um, Esther not far behind. Dodd with a heroic finish. Uh, Taya beats her friend Beth York. Uh, Beth, maybe don't try to call so many races next time. <laughs> they're down there hugging. Lots of hugging on the line here. Now, these girls, now that they're no longer going toe to toe, they appreciate the, the competition that they were able to get the, themselves in. Siri Hilden, uh, of course, Inga Jansen also in that group and finishing it out. Um, we've, yeah, we've got Inga right there. So I'm going to go down here yep, and talk to a few awesome, of these ladies. Awesome. So as we look down on the track here real quick, we see lots of happiness, right? Happiness that we're finished here. And we're going to gear this up. Uh, that's what's so nice to see. You see these riders talking to each other and making sure that they, uh, that they thank each other right there. Uh, Irina talking to, uh, to Steve Tweedy, who raced a little bit ago. There's BJ Alfonso, uh, the director sportif, uh, and she he got his students, uh, rather, uh, players out here. Inga's still on course, doing a nice finish, um, just spinning it out. Maybe actually she jumped in a workout there with a little bit of extra time that she had. <laughs> wow, Harriet Dodd doing an amazing job. Amazing job. So uh, Rachel is on course right now still with Coach and, uh, and really good things uh, happening, right? So, so as we kind of get ready to conclude this, we're going to jump down to Coach in just a second. He's got uh, Rachel here who 
again, unofficial, our winner uh, overall, she managed to edge uh, just by th uh, two points, rather, uh, Marion Sacot, the French rider, to be able to take this top spot uh, today. So we'll go down to the coach and find out what was the strategy on this. It looks like she proved us wrong. Rachel Elliott heard us say, well, you're not a sprinter, which is, uh, again, code for, I'm going to show you that I'm a sprinter. Coach, what's up? Well, I'm down here with Rachel and our overall winner, and she did really, really well. What an exciting race. Rachel, tell us about that final third stage. How'd it go? I've never had to ride a race like that in my life. I'm, I'm used to time training. I'm used to holding a consistent power from the start. So having to back off to sort of what I call club run pace <laughs> um, wasn't at all comfortable. Um, I got an aero power up pretty early. Um, so um, I made the decision to keep that and, and use it 500 meters from the end, step the back of the pack um, and attack when people weren't expecting. I saw Ian Bibby do it in a men's race earlier and I thought, well, if he can do it, so can I. So um, that was my main tactic. Um, I know my minute power is pretty good, so that was my strategy and it, it paid off today. But um, <laughs> all credit to the other girls. They're really, really strong and it's, it's really, really good to do, a, to do a proper race like that. So, so well done to everyone else. And I mean, we saw you, I mean, you took a off on that climb in the first stage and then dominated that. The second stage, those ladies kept up with you. You tried an attack and they got right back to you. So uh, all of a sudden you realized there was this group dynamic. Was it nine against one? How did you feel out there? How was that? Um, I mean, I knew yesterday I, I, I did win my heat by quite a long way, but I had a feeling that people like Marion were hedging a bit and, and they weren't going flat out. And I know Marion's an incredibly strong, good rider. So she was my main fear today. And certainly when I was going up the climb, I got the gap, but it wasn't increasing. So um, I burnt all my matches on that first race. And the second race, I, I was absolutely exhausted. I, I really didn't want to start, but um, so I, I stayed with the group. I, I made a couple of attacks early on. They didn't work like they have before. Um, Marion was always on my, my wheel, so I just held back. And um, when everyone else got um, feather, featherweight power-ups on the final climb and I hadn't got one, I got dropped. So um, I, I put in all I could to try and catch them, but um, almost caught Marion on the line, but not quite. So I knew I had to do everything I could in the last race, and it, it certainly wasn't my ideal way of racing, but it was, it was really good fun, actually, and a really good, good way to race. So. That's, that's great. And, and that consistency, that consistency, Chris, that's really what counted here in this three stages. You know, she was first in the first race in the hill climb, second in the second race, and then at the very end got fourth. That's what got her the points to bring her up to the first overall. Just like a normal outdoor race, you've got to have that consistency. So congratulations. Congratulations, way to go. You did an outstanding effort. Good job. Oh, th thank you very much, and thank you to everyone, to so the CVR team. It's been an absolutely fantastic experience, and it's, it's been great to race with some really, really strong women today. So, so well done to everyone. All right, all right, all right. Thank you. We're glad to see this. I'm going to catch, throw it back to you, Chris, and then I'm going to head over here and talk to uh, our stage winner as well. We'll get Antoine, uh, and uh, we'll get a little bit more for you. Okay, I know that we're gearing up. We're starting to put people on the stage. We're going to go to those right now. Well, we're going to go to those awards here in just a second. As we kind of wrap this up, we put a little bit of a, a bow on it. Let's, let's talk about what happened there at the very end. I know you want me to tell you you won the computer. Hold on, folks. Thank you for watching. But if you're, if you're connected on social media, we would love to know uh, some of the things that you really liked about this event. So many things added to this compared to the London uh, CBR. And, and those things things are, are really critical for us to kind of know the cycle view, the cycle fantasy. We'll check in on that maybe if we've got time before the end here. The three stage race, uh, the two days, so many things added. It's almost like it jumped up such a notch we don't even recognize it. Maybe it was kind of Apple computer, Steve Jobs, iPhone surprise, kind of that kind of thing. Or maybe iPad, maybe not. Maybe, maybe we're talking apples and oranges here, but certainly innovation uh, in this form of eSport where we meet 
real sport and we meet a digital sport. Uh, games in computer. Obviously, you saw the pain on their faces. These world-class athletes uh, are everything. We see pros in this group. We see world champions in this group. Really cool stuff. So jump out, let us know. Do you like this? Do you like it that this occurs in Zwift? Then uh, throw that at Go Zwift on there so that we can track it or the at CVR. Jump in there, give us a thought, let us know uh, what you think. Um, also, uh, as, we, as we gear up for this big finish, we've got Hunter preparing to head to that stage here. We're going to give away some awards and we're going to do that in just a second. We saw this big flurry of a finish and what was awesome about this as the third stage, we saw just this unbelievable just you know, kind of swirling mass of riders. Honestly, it was a Sharknado, ladies and gentlemen. We saw sharks and bikes and chainsaws. It was crazy. And who emerged from the top, the survivor? We didn't know until they crossed the line. In this case, in this race, it was Irina. And she managed to drive it and she jumped, again, that page from Crazy Talk right there. She jumps out in front, make sure that she gets to the front and managed to stay away. Ione Johnson chases, comes in across, Rachel Elliott takes that third spot, Suko that fourth spot, and that really determines our overall uh, winner. Now, in a moment, we're going to see, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Irina and uh, Iona, um, <laughs> Ioni rather, that's going to be tricky to say. Um, we're going to see which of them with tied points comes across first, and I think we'll have that shortly in a moment. I think everybody wants to know. But you can right now on the CVR page, and I'm doing it myself here, you can dial in, you can double check and see what that prize pool looks at. Well over $45,500, and we're seeing, oh, and they are cascade, there's so many live cheers going crazy crazy right now, but you can view that prize pool and you can see. We're going to see over $3,000 awarded to the winner of this three-stage race right here at $1,000 less for that second place, which I think we're pretty sure who that is. Um, that is a big prize purse for an event like this, just two days. CVR World Cup has been able to do that by turning this prize pool over to you, the audience, and, and to me for the opportunity to kick in a few bucks and see what we can do to promote cycling. It is no accident that this women's race was the top race. You saw the fireworks were there. This was the last race of the day. We saved it for the biggest crowd and these people were not disappointed. They were together almost to the bitter end before that sharknado of just energy blew up the entire race right there at the end. That is exactly what you want. No one wants to tune into a, just a blowout uh, who just goes crazy off the front. We like to see things that are very, very different, right? We like to see strategy. We like to see who's got power-ups. Rachel Elliott mentioned she had that power-up and she held on to it for the last 500 meters. She stayed at the back of the group. She dropped it and went. That's strategy, ladies and gentlemen. That's the kind of thing that you've got to see in a race like this. All right. Uh, you're like, enough, Chris. That's, that's absolutely enough. I know I'm getting... Uh, you know, messages from the Ohio chapter right now saying, look, it's time to find some awards. And we're going to go to that stage in just a second. I'm waiting in here to find out if those folks are set and we'll take those cameras. And we'll jump in with uh, the men's performance. Those, we're going to have some stats here for you because they're moving cameras into position. Um, we've got some squirrels behind the scenes who actually adjust the lights. That's another really interesting thing about CVR is the trained squirrels that move lights into positions. It wouldn't surprise you with, with Zwift. 3,076 is that top prize, right? 2051 is that second prize. That is a big difference, right? That second prize, and we're going to award that here in just a second. And uh, 1,538 uh, is that third prize. Now, let me tell you something else. Um, what we'll do as we get ready to go to this, um, we'll throw this out there to social media one last time. Give us your favorite. Tag CBR at you know, at CVR or even hashtag that CVR. We'll search it and find out. Let us know what's your favorite element. And it's okay if you say all, but give us your favorite element of this. Was it the three-stage race? Was it the fact that it included a crit, right? Was it uh, that we had preliminaries and finals? You pick it. Um, if it's me, um, well, I already know. So don't use that one. Um, maybe it was Hunter. 
uh, and his bulging muscles. That could be one of those things as well. Maybe it was Beth on the, on the booth, here, her and I together. Well, that was a lot of fun. And I won't talk to imaginary Beth because she's not here right now. But as we prepare to go down to these, uh, you know, to the awards, we've got our folks. I can see them in the distance on stage. Uh, I see Frank Garcia. I see Hunter Allen. I see James Gill all gathered together there. I think it's time that we do this. We've got to make sure that this, uh, this award ceremony is indicative of the, of the pageantry that we've seen here. As, as we kind of put this bow on the last couple of days uh, here in Paris, it's been phenomenal. They've been long, long days. And our crew, we've had a big crew uh, working this, so many great camera angles, so much incredible technical expertise um, all the way down the line uh, from folks that you don't know, but let me tell you who they are. Folks like Renee and Jackie and Danny Yep, and we, yeah, definitely. All those folks along the, yeah, Jamie is one of our folks right there who's bringing stuff to us all the time. There are so many folks. They've raised the bar here. I know, I'm getting it pinged. You know, my phone's lighting up. We got, they want to know who we're going to do. So I think what we'll do here is we'll actually give away our alien computer right now as we're waiting for things to kind of fire up on stage here. I see people in position. Maybe we won't. You're like, Haskell, stop teasing it this way. We may actually go there. I'm seeing people in position. So we'll give you, here's how it'll go. We'll give you very quickly men's performance, women's performance, men's elite, women's elite in that order. We'll go very quickly through this. One comment from each of them. Maybe we could limit it to haiku. How about that? Hunter Allen takes that mic and says, all right, your, your thank you speech in haiku. Throws it over there to Quentin LeFay, who might say, go hard real fast now. I must race the fastest. I hurt in my legs. Right? Is that a haiku? You'll let me know on social media if it's not. But a short message from each of them. We're seeing them organize on stage. I'll know when the camera takes over there that it's time for them to go. It looks like they're lining up in position and uh, in front of that stage where we had the band. So I'll throw right down now to Hunter, who's going to tell us how this thing is going to go. Okay, so here we go. We've got Hunter. Let me tell you, men's performance, giving away that third place prize uh, is James Gill. And James. he's giving that prize, that third place prize, to Quentin, Quentin. LeFay. Applause from the audience. All right. Very good. James Gill giving that away. That would be the Titanium Geek. Finally, the applause comes. Now, I'm going to take away your juice boxes, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not apply the proper amount of applause for the work that these folks have done. So we've also got on that stage, giving away second place prize, our guy Hunter Allen, and that is Gavin Arbor. Very good. Second place. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, we'll jump to that first place right now. We'll give, jump to that first place. And Frank Garcia giving away that first place prize to Ernst Templar. Ernst Templar giving away that third place prize. Very good as they walk up there. Almost like the prom, you know, you have your parents walk you out yes, onto the field. Not the prom, rather, but homecoming. Ernst Templar comes out there with yeah. his dad. Um, they take that bow. Um, we'll call him the, do, yeah, there we go. One, two, three. Those are our things. They look down. Then they usually step up to that top. They're holding their paper check. Don't try to cash that right away, per se. Um, they usually step up to that top platform. But these boys are tired. They've been at it for a couple of days. Very good job. All right, let's tell you about our women's performance. Now, we'll give away two of those. Okay. Um, yep. We'll let yep. you know who second right is. Perfect. So James right, Gill uh, is going to give away that third place right. prize again awesome. right there. Uh, we'll do this. Dixie, um, and actually I don't think we're going to jump to that interview. I promised you that, uh, that we were going to do that interview, but because we are so over time uh, now, we're going to back this off just a little bit and make sure that we give you what you need and the time allowed. Um, Right, because we're pushing into evening news, aren't we? We uh, are. We are. So Beth, back on the desk with me. I'll make yeah, some you space. Yeah, you probably want to give a little bit more room. Sorry. Well, you know, I'm just <laughs> a hair. <laughs> I'm just a hair tired. Okay. So our, our women's performance. We've got that third place um, given by James Gill. Dixie Newsom. Yeah. Big applause from the crowd. Dixie Newsom in that third position. Women's performance. Women's performance. Dixie Newsom. Yep, Dixie Newsom is that women's performance, right? And she had a, just a great she effort. She really did. She did well today. I was really happy for How her. are you even speaking? You <laughs> talked all day, Beth, and then you got on the bike and you delivered pain to plenty of the other riders. 
Oh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and I want you to know that I'm sitting next to her, and there is absolutely no aroma coming off of her. Yeah. She looks Lovely. like she's just as fresh uh, as she just prepared, you know, for the big dance. I, I, I still have my powder down here. Ah, I think, yes, I think powder. I'm a little shiny. I was using it a little bit. I didn't clearly get enough on my forehead. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump right. into the women's performance now. And as I mentioned, I, spoiler alert, uh, James Gill giving away that third prize. That is Dixie Newsom with that third prize. Very good. And the applause goes up. The applause goes up. And maybe not. Well, that's there fine. There it is. There oh, it is. good. I always have to make sure that it's not part of my imaginary world. <laughs> no. Nope. That it's something else nope, entirely. No, that was real. That was real. I'm here, I'm here actually to validate that yes. the imaginary world is real. Yes. Now, um, Fleur, uh, who has done an amazing job, has also turned herself invisible. And, and she's gonna. She's actually on stage right there. But in that, uh, that first Carrie. spot, we've got Carrie Conabare yes. with a heroic effort in that women's performance uh, heat today. That's wow, right. that was outstanding. Took all three Yeah, that, that was a sweep for sure. She there we go. Big applause for those folks. And we'll move on to the men's elite. Great job, ladies. Thank you for such a great show. What a great show that was. It was amazing. It was mm -hmm. so much fun to watch. Now, uh, how are you feeling right now after this as we get ready to bring those men up? Oh, you know, I'm starting to feel better now that I got to stop. Right, yes. right, right. Yes, yeah. I had uh, coach, uh, coach in my ear on that first <laughs> stage on the hill. And, and in my head, I was like, this is it. I yep. don't know how I'm going to do the other two stages. Okay, so our <laughs> men's elite, uh, we've got Justin Purificati yes, in that Justin. third position. James Gill giving him an awkward man hug. Uh, we'll see if it happens the way I predicted. No, it's just going to be a handshake. James Gill is not a hugger, and that's okay. That's going to be okay today. Justin Purificati from Canada, great job. Scotty Weiss with that second place uh, being given by Hunter Allen. Lots of love steps up onto that second uh, podium spot here. Great job. Scotty with a, a crazy comeback. But that first spot goes and the award given by Frank Garcia to Ian Bibby for an outstanding performance. And he was not able to construct that hat trick. He wasn't, but boy, boy, what a fight. <laughs> no kidding. These three riders, they're going to stand next to each other, reach around each other's skinny waist, um, <laughs> and congratulate each other for the great work that they've done. Now, we have one more collection of awards to give away, and we saw those racers here just a little bit ago. We've got that lineup right now. And so as we move to this, you were in this women's elite race. I Tell was. me about the power of Rachel, of Marion, well, right? Yeah, they were, they are so strong. Oh. It's, it, it, it's almost like, you know, we, a car that has, you know, five gears and then yeah, right, all of a sudden right. it's like six and, yes. then, and off they go. So, you know, uh, we, we were all tight. We were all together there for the first two laps of the, of the last, last yes. stage. And then it was just, you know, power on and and yes. off they went. No and, kidding. And from where I was sitting, I couldn't see the finish, but I could hear you calling it. It sounded pretty <laughs> exciting. <laughs> yes, Sharknado. Sharknado. <laughs> Sharknado 7 happened here in uh, CVR World Paris. Now, the question that we have that Hunter is going to answer here is who came in third? We mentioned that there, were, there was a tie, right? Irina and Ioni, 40 points each. That's incredible. And so it goes Dug to their time. overall time. So Mark has been able to do this. And it looks like it's Irina with a heroic effort at the end. I wondered if that gap would do it. It was just a couple of seconds. But she comes in third here. Now Marion in second place. Hunter uh, Allen gives away that uh, third place prize. James, well rather, hey, James gives away that third place prize. Hunter says hello uh, to Marion, and uh, she did such a great job. Sako on second, and finally Frank Garcia, the leader of CVR here, gives that top prize to Rachel Elliott, and it was hard fought. She had to keep that surprise at the end there. She kept it. We heard her 500 meters to go uh, with her Kiss jersey on. She wins the top prize today for the women's elite right here at CVR World Cup. Paris outstanding the crowd applauds they go crazy everyone uh, tired and excited for this incredible race that was amazing. okay congratulations as comes, yes as it comes back to the desk here it's just you and I where it all started thoughts 
Uh, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think, was. We, I think we should do it again. Oh, <laughs> is again. it really? Yeah, okay. and again. Again and again? Yes. Okay, yes. We'll, we'll see how that goes. You, the audience, will tell us what you think of it and if that's something that you'd like to do. A lot of happiness. There's, there seems to be some posing. There's a shirtless man. Crazy things happening here on a Saturday night in Paris. We hope that we've given you something uh, to be excited for. What is one thing that you loved in this experience today? I love the international feel. I love I loved all of these riders coming together. I loved the fights that we saw. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, the fireworks. I mean, it was just high caliber racing. Yes. And it was so fun. So fun, indeed. And it was great to uh, commune with the community. Thank you to everyone who watched and contributed. This is how this kind of grassroots racing grows into World Cup status. There are all your winners on screen with their fabulous paper checks. We, uh, we also get paid with the same fabulous paper checks. Um, I ask for the large one each time, but I do we get that small pack on the plane. It is hard to pack <laughs> on the plane, which is why they go the medium size. And they love it. Okay, so it's time for our alien giveaway. We have a, that finally, you're like, here it is. Tell me, read my name. Yes, and who gets you, it? That's such a great that prize. Is, it is oh. a great prize. It's an Alienware i7 because we want everyone to enjoy virtual cycling. And of course, it goes to a cyclist, a guy named Brian Hill. Congratulations, yes, from Brian. from Vancouver, BC. He was the lucky winner in this one. Congratulations uh, with that. Again, Brian Hill. If your name is also Brian Hill, wait for the email. We're not <laughs> giving them to every Brian Hill. If you're trying to change your name very quickly to Brian Hill, very clever, but that's not you. We've got the very specific email. You're like, well, what is that email? We're not giving it away. We'll just call that person. But that was the last prize given away. So many people got prizes in different categories here, and the people made it possible. So what was your big favorite thing, the big closing thought you've got? Think of this as Olympic final night. What, what was your mm -hmm. big takeaway? My big takeaway was that, um, that the racing, the caliber of racing just gets higher and higher. Yeah. And um, anything can happen. And the format of this uh, three-stage race and having preliminaries, I think that that was just a really exciting format and, 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 it, and it ramped up in a nice crescendo. So it was, it it was, it was a nice buildup. It did. And we're, we're at the end of the season here. Really, it's after, if you can think about it in this way, it's after January 1st and we're starting to take down the ornaments the bikes are rolling out of the moon but we're just packing this stuff away waiting for that Christmas to roll around again now when will that be and where will that be will be really interesting could it be somewhere like Vegas again could it be maybe somewhere in Canada Vancouver somewhere else could it be maybe um Let's say Baraboo, Wisconsin. Probably not Baraboo, Wisconsin. Just, just oh, go with okay. me here. I can't give you all of the possible things. Could be somewhere like New York. So many things remain to be seen. So many things in this CVR racing world, in this Zwift racing world. But I think we've moved the needle here a little I, bit. I think the, the needle has the, like been like... <laughs> yeah, it, it hit the top right now. It broke, it cracked the glass. We've seen so many different things, not the least of which was the race format, which gave us exciting stories to tell throughout. So we hope that you continue to join us for these types of things, to relive these races. Hope it motivates you to get on the bike, especially in the virtual world. So for Hunter Allen, for Beth, for the whole crew here. A huge thank you to the huge production crew and the, the technical crew. wizards behind and yep. making all of these rider stations. I mean, it is no like kidding. magic. We'll turn the <laughs> lights out on the tree for the last time, but know that this is not the end. Stay tuned. If you go and you compete in these cyclogen virtual rankings, it doesn't matter what category you are, there's a very good likelihood, and I don't want to spoil this because I have been asked not to. Doesn't matter what category you are, there's a chance that you could compete. What if you're in a team? So many things, you better cut the feed right now before I give too <laughs> much away. Someone clip his mic. No Someone kidding. clip his mic. But thanks for joining us. We <laughs> hope you loved it. We sure did. Goodbye from Paris. Au revoir.